national. Et à quoi venu de Suisse, il a été champion national catégorie espoir, Michael Barr. Merci d'applaudir l'équipe d'étape sur le podium. Formation allemande. Que de retrouvons avec le directeur du Tour de France et de Marie-Rouge. <rire> <rire> Yeah, good form and uh, you know, couldn't have done much more in training and things, so just go out there and play hard and Chandler Reynes qui est de rejoindre pour le compte de l'équipe Omega Farmaloto. Derrière lui, nous retrouvons Emmanuel Erviti, le port qui s'est imposé à deux reprises sur les routes du Tour d'Espagne et qui n'avait pas vu que c'était Reynes à côté de lui. Il est tellement dans la cour. Donc, derrière, on va continuer avec l'équipe de la formation Katusha qui rejoint le Premier. Die Mannschaften sich keine Endkampfchance ausrechnen und die wollen natürlich Präsenz haben für ihren Sponsor im Fernsehen von der ersten Minute an. Das ist auch unser Fokus, dass wir uns zeigen äh, am Anfang, wo noch kein. Le décompte. Attention. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Alors les applaudis, quel meilleur gagne. 197 coureurs au départ de cette édition 2011 de Paris Compiègne. Roubaix. setting the pace for Europe cars, the Canadian rider, David Velio, and the breakaway consisting of David Boucher, Martin Elmiger, the Swiss rider, Jimmy Ongelvon, Jean Payani, uh, Mitchell Docker, the Australian, is in here. He's having a good start to the day, as he did in the Tour of Flanders last week. Nelson Oliveira, uh, David Velio, and also Timon Sobert of the little-known NetApp team, which has been given a wild card entry. And I must say, nobody knows quite why. Well, I have to say the probable reason that uh, they've been included is because it's a, a new German team and they're trying to support German cycling, which over the last couple of years has had a little bit of a difficult time. 
There's Elminger displaying his colours as national champion in the Swiss. <laughs> I'm just going to go and do a uh, I'm taking a bit of this. I'm taking a bit of the mud in front of us. Voilà, 15 secondes. Au dernier pointage pour les 5 coureurs de tête avec Elming. in the uh, Tour of Flanders which is Belgium's equivalent of Paris-Roubaix uh, they, uh, they're bringing back George Hincapi here at the moment we've just heard he had a flat tyre and his whole team looks as though they've dropped back Team BMC to bring him back into the peloton well if you're going to have problems and most people do on this race it's good to have them early on right? Certainly especially at this point because we're actually with Lem and that's why I think George Hincapi if it's the only bad luck he has today I think he'd be rather happy this is the team car here of Leopard Trek and there is the man who leads the team last year's winner Fabian Cancellara taking time out he won't be too concerned at this stage there's still an awful long way to race 141 kilometers to go he's gonna have a bike change well there's no panic at all from Fabian Cancellara he takes the bottle off her makes sure that he keeps himself uh, topped up with fluids in fact last week in the Tour of Flanders he was complaining be because this really is uh, the first serious heat in Europe and a lot of the riders complaining that they weren't able to keep themselves topped up with fluids no it is actually uh, tipped to hit 23 or 24 degrees Celsius today which uh, if you're still thinking Fahrenheit is about 74 degrees Fahrenheit absolutely beautiful day for the spectators although I think most spectators fair to say Paul would like it to be cold and rainy so the riders would have to hit those cobblestones uh, glacial and uh, would come out the other end covered in mud
Yeah, there are right to pick up those bottles as souvenirs for themselves. Ah, Mark Cavendish here. Now, I think he might have had a problem as well. He's trying to get back. He's choosing the right car to pace behind. This is the chief referee's car here, so they can't complain about that. Uh, Cavendish making his debut today in Paris Bay, a race he's always wanted to ride. Well, that's one thing he's, he said last week, Phil, when he uh, was at the start of the Tour of Flanders. He just knows these bike races. He Much because he's got his teammate Mitchell Docker, the Australian, in there as we hit the section of cobblestones here at Vertin. It's given three stars out of a top level of five, 2.3 kilometres. And you can see the dust already coming up. This becomes most unpleasant, especially on the eyes if you're forced to follow somebody's back wheel. Yeah, but it also uh, gives a chance to ride at much higher speeds than you can when uh, the conditions are wet and slippery, and these guys will take serious risks. But even in the dry, these cobblestones made out of uh, granite rock can be extremely smooth, so when you go around one or two of the corners with this little thin covering of dust on the top of them, it can make them pretty slippery too. As Martin Elmanger setting the pace at the front here is a very, very good Swiss side. He's done well in the Tour Down Under in the past. Uh, which is a race he always seems to excel in early in the month of January in Adelaide and uh, now he swings off to the other side now there is a secret of riding these cobbles aren't there Paul? No the best way the ideal way is actually to ride in the middle because uh, you can see the two riders uh, riding on the left and the right hand side of the row well in fact that's the the worst part to ride on because you've got much more chance of, of getting small stones into your tires and getting a flat tire so the the ideal place really if you've got the strength is to ride on the crown of the cobblestones as the peloton now entering the same sector here almost having to queue up to get round the very narrow road straight into the uh, section of cobblestones if you've got ambition you really do need to be on the front when we get to the section of the forest of Arenberg because that's when uh, things go wrong heavily for riders it's called the Arenberg trench and it comes at 172 kilometers you know, the important thing about the Forest of Arenberg, Phil, it's not necessarily uh, where you win Paris-Roubaix, but certainly in the past many riders have lost Paris-Roubaix on that section of cobblestones. It's a long, nasty section of cobblestones, and to me it's probably the most important first strategic point of the race, coming at uh, 172 kilometres in. <laughs> Hele bandes, hè? Ja. Pas op, ze rijden hier ook. Allee, kom maar, kom maar. Aldingen is er toch bij. Daar, lekker band. Lekker band? Ne za? Omega farba. Buši. Buši. Tu to je tebe, tu je nešto kde vidíš. Allez, boucher, come on! Allez, come on! Drive for! Hey, pause, pause, that's next, is it? That's a bomb! Yeah! Salam! Thank you, and you! Hammond! was without doubt the best win of his career. There's the little chase group trying to sort things out, but the peloton won't let them get too far, I don't think. There is a gentle wind blowing across the race at the moment, uh, but quite honestly, it is an idyllic day. I, you can't really see the wind as a factor today. 
No, this uh, really reminds me a little bit of the, the weather conditions that, that the race had when Stuart O'Grady won uh, way back in 2004, coming out through the, uh, the dust. It really was a, a dramatic ride on that occasion. It was very complicated because uh, the uh, motorbikes had changed position and all of a sudden there was a guy coming out through the dust and uh, we recognised it as O'Grady flying to a lone victory. So Andre Geipel led the court and uh, Stangele are the three riders trying to chase them at the moment. Well, they've only got a 10-second advantage over the front end of the main field. <laughs> Section of cobblestones in Troisville. Well, there's the full spread for you now. A minute 10 to the three poursuivants, uh, to the chasers, and a minute 20 to the peloton itself. So. They're holding on to their advantage just now, and I think it'll start to develop mainly once we get to the forest of Arenberg, and uh, they won't worry about the whereabouts of the breakaway till then, but it's clearly not making great progress. Nice to see that the rapeseed is off to the right, looking proudly yellow, the colour, of course, of the leader's jersey of the Tour de France, and this organisation is the very same organisation that organises the Tour de France, whereas the Tour is over three weeks. This is their classic one-day race and uh, well you very rarely get a lucky winner in Paris Roubaix but you also very often Phil get a lot of riders have had bad luck and had to fight their way back into the event because of either flat tires or crashes accidents uh, getting left behind on uh, certain sections of cobblestones and you have to have that determination when you start Paris Roubaix because you know when you get out of bed in the morning you're going to have at least some form of bad luck out on the course Yes, even though these bikes are, uh, he's had the closest finish, there's a quick step rider in trouble here, but it's not Tom Bonin, or is it? No, in fact it's not, the rider is, it's, it's uh, Goddard, no it's not Goddard. No, no, it's a, it looks like a Chavanel actually. You're right, it is too, Sylvain Chavanel, who's, uh, he was the hero last week, chased down originally by his own teammate, Tom Bonin, but there was no animosity at the finish, which I was rather surprised about. We were with the Quick Step team about an hour after the finish on the way back towards uh, our boat across the channel and chatting with Patrick Lefebvre. There seemed to be no animosity. The riders were friendly, having a snack before they said, leader of Quick Step. Because a lot of people here, because we're in France, are saying there's more value in the advertising of Quick Step if the French rider was to win rather than Tom Bonin. But remember, if Tom Bonin does win today, that'll give him four victories in history and that puts him level with Roger de Vlaminck with a chance that he could go five in the years ahead. Well, looking at the star ratings of all the riders this morning, uh, the man who has more stars than anyone else with a four-star chance of winning this race is Fabian Cancellara, but that's in the French press. Now, if you read the Belgian press at the start of the day, Phil, they are all talking about Tom Bonin, saying that he's actually sitting on some very good form, yeah. and it's a completely different race at the effort and the energy that you need in Paris-Roubaix to the kind of effort that you have to produce in uh, the Tour of Flanders, which has its cobblestone sections, but most of those are uphill. Sector 22 we are on now, which is 1.7 kilometres long. Uh, Capelle sur Caillon is this stretch of cobblestones. Uh, remember, we're counting down. The last sector is number one, and it's just on the outskirts of the velodrome. It's a, it's a little courtesy farewell sector. Very smooth cobblestones, uh, and they're just outside the velodrome here in Roubaix. Well, Martin Elmer, you see uh, just on the, the right-hand side in the red jersey there, he's a champion of Switzerland. You can see the white cross on the middle. He's almost riding a cyclocross, riding in the dirt at the side of the road. But it's a, it's a big, it's a big dangerous thing to do there because you've got much more chance of having an accident flipping uh, onto the cobbles and off because there's nearly always a slight difference in height between the, the side of the cobbles and the actual cobblestone section itself. Well, it's 50 seconds are saying, but I don't think they uh, were saying 120 to the peloton, but I'm not sure that gap exists now because they've just swung on to that same sector of cobblestones here. They race very hard to get into those narrow entries onto these cobble sections, and then once they're there, they hold their position because there's not much opportunity for movement in the peloton at this stage, but you've got to be careful. Riders make a mistake. You see one or two bunny hopping the stones. If they make a mistake there, they'll take out half of the big pack. Yeah, but this is also a very uh, difficult section technically as well because this is a section with some up and downhill in it as they roll through these uh, these fields in the northern part of Sibyl.
vu, il y a un bouc télécom. C'est l'Europe Car. Allez, je le dé... Hé, hey, papa je... Ils sont pas loin. Il y a David Boucher là-dedans. Allez, David Allez Allez, David Allez Allez, David Regarded as a, there's a crash that we were waiting for. There's the world champion as well, right in the middle, Tor Hushoft, and that's why all of these guys know this is a very nasty technical section. Exactly what we were talking about. Leopard Trek rider is also stopped on the road there, and I wasn't sure, but it might have said number one on his back, in which case it was Cancellara. New bike required for AG2R. Now this is when it gets a bit tough because the front end of the peloton is racing away here now and this is quite chaotic just at the moment. Well this is because this is probably wor the worst part of the cobblestones. Uh, Looking over there you can see uh, Bjorn Lukemans from Vacon Soleil number 91 on the... <laughs> Oh non, j'irai pas la ramasser. Tu sais, il y a trop d'orchis là. On s'en fout, c'est moi, on en a plein. On te rend tout. Bjorn Lukemans, he's a man for Paris Bay, rode extremely well last week in the Tour de Flanders, top six finish for him there, and uh, has uh, finished fourth in this event in the past, so he likes this event. Well, this is the group you can just see slightly off the front end of the main field. This is the group of uh, André Greipel, he's joined there by Boucher, uh, who also rides for the same team. He's a Frenchman on Omega Pharma Lotto. Uh, Kevin Decourt is in there for skill. And just sitting on the back there, of course, uh, Goraz Stangalai of Team Astana. But for them, they avoided the accident that has really uh, lacerated this main field. Well, Boucher was with the leading group, but he got uh, shot off on Sector 24. And he's rejoined by, picked up by Greipel's group there. Now the seven leaders still in front. Astana playing a very prominent role in those turquoise-coloured jerseys at the moment. 40 seconds is the gap. Peloton doesn't seem to be pushing home any advantage from that crash at the moment. Well, uh, that's uh, Jalingi, the man uh, sitting on the front there from Team Rabobank. He's a member of that uh, early breakaway of, uh, of seven, what is down, down to seven riders. He is a strong bike rider, and this is a good attempt here by the Rabobank riders to create a bit of a surprise here this afternoon. That's Stangalai just uh, swinging off the front there. Oh, there's the spread at minute 25 across the peloton. It's been like this for some kilometres now as far as the peloton's been concerned. Stangalai trying to get Greipel and uh, Kuhn de Court up there. I don't know whether David Boucher will have the legs once he gets up there now. He's on the way back. And you can see the, uh, if it was windy and wet, so the sort of devastation the weather could cause to this race. But at the moment it's just a dust storm and it's very unpleasant inside the heart of the peloton. You literally can't see where you're going. You might just have noticed uh, a team car on the side of the road where, well, normally you are supposed to be serviced uh, from the back of the race in your own team car, but the teams have a strategy in an event like Paris-Roubaix, and they put people out on the course uh, with spare bikes and spare machines because they know that if there's been an accident, as we've just seen, the actual team cars can be as much as uh, three and four minutes behind. 
So as they turn right off the course, the last man on this peloton is the British rider Jerry. Through that section of cobblestones at uh, Capelso et Caillon, they've got round about uh, 16 kilometres now before the next section. So that's probably why some of these riders at the front end of the main field are trying to take the advantage of uh, what's happened just a little bit further back on the road. So Zhang Li still uh, again another man uh, who rode extremely well in the early stages of the Flanders last week. He's been the workhorse for Rabobank today. These are the legs of Nelson Oliveira of Rad Radio Shack, and this is the champion of Switzerland, Martin Elmiger, former winner of the uh, Santos Tour Down Under in Australia. Jangali has really flowered since he came across from skilled Samano onto a top uh, World Tour team. As the spread of the peloton, we've still got up the road. We've still got four riders chasing a leading group of seven but you can throw a blanket over them and the riders know this. They're just waiting for a moment when they might be able to consolidate a move. Well, if this race is going to be tactically similar to that one of uh, last week, uh, the Tour of Flanders, we're about to witness an extremely aggressive race. It was one of the fastest Tour of Flanders I've seen. And there's a lot of riders in this race, Paris-Roubaix to Dayfield, who want to get some revenge from their performances. Wait. This is the chasing group. Number 60 there was in the breakaway. He got dispatched to the back on one of the stretches of cobblestones. Cobble section 24. He went backwards, David Boucher. But it's not too far. Now another puncture on the right of the road here. Now they are coming thick and fast at the moment. That was another Leopard Trek rider, Paul. And I think that was Dominique Clemmer who was stopped changing his tyres. Well, I've, I've always said, Phil, about uh, this race, you will always have a, a certain amount of bad luck. This man has had big bad luck because number 91, Bjorn Lukemans, was tipped by a number of riders as being a, a man who could get himself into the top ten at the end of the day. He's currently on the back foot, up against the uh, the rails in the, in the boxing ring and trying to find himself back into this race. And this is big Hurt Stegemans as well, a man who uh, supposedly was the co-leader of Quick Step with uh, Chavanel and Tom Bonin. Well, he's come back to uh, Quick Step this year he left Radio Shack last year rejoined Quick Step where he was once the lead out man for Tom Bone and he's obviously had prop back in the main field yet to come through Adam Hansen the Australian who was uh, on HTC oh, another crash, oh, and over another the crash and, uh, and, uh, somebody around the corner as well these are happening in amazingly strange places well it's the chaos it's the pressure of the race here this afternoon Phil riders are battling to stay at the front end of the main field they'll be taking one or two risks at getting around the corners and as I said a little earlier even in dry conditions this race can be very slippery and we're getting a chance here to oh, see the chaos at the back and another man be, goes it, down well he just a workman like group now here Phil getting themselves organized uh, everybody prepared to participate because they know if this breakaway can survive and go into the forest of Arenberg with uh, a little bit of an advantage uh, they've got a chance of finishing high up in the standings when they come to the finish of Paris-Roubaix there's the leaders for you now Greipel having come across with uh, the other riders there Jangli, Decord, Docker they were always in the break Oliveira, David Velleu Stangley came across as well and uh, well this is Boucher sitting on the back uh, he was in, in the early morning breakaway and then got himself uh, caught by the chasing group which just happened to contain one of his own teammates and that's his teammate on the front there wearing number 51 Andre Greipel who's not had the stellar start to the season that he might have had last year but he has changed teams and he's now starting to find himself a, a little bit of form in the month of April Yes, well, last year Greipel won 21 races and a lot of those, including the overall classification and three... An HTC rider. Well, again, this is oh, uh, Cavendish. Oh, this is back to Cavendish now, yes. Yeah, Cavendish uh, having some adjustments done to his bike. He's uh, having a very fast learning session about Paris roubaix here this afternoon, having to understand it. It is all about determination, a desire to stay in the bike race and a desire to have the courage to fight back when you do have a spot of bad luck. Yes, well, Mark, uh, the, th the thing is that these cobblestones, uh, things drop off your bike you never knew you had on them. And uh, it looks as though his handlebars may have come a little bit loose there, trying to sort it out or readjust them, make it a bit more comfortable for him. You can see the extra handlebar tape he's got on there to make it. He put a slightly larger chainring on just for a couple of sections of cobblestones like that one there, which would have 48 teeth on it. And immediately on to sector 20 now, Famar Keranang. 1.2 kilometers only two stars so uh, basically not terribly technical but nonetheless uh, to be encountered at high speed very quickly after Olnoy well you can see the
This uh, young man, David Boucher, he's a French rider on Omega Pharma Lotto. He's actually sacrificing himself as much as he can when he gets to these cobblestone sections because he's very happy with the presence of Andre Greipel in the group. Greipel sitting just a little bit further back there knows he's in a very good situation here this afternoon to get himself into what we normally call the early morning breakaway, although this afternoon it happened a little bit later. Well, he's looking so strong, Paul. I, he got dropped on sector 24, but maybe he was told to fall back and get Andre up to the leaders, which is what has happened. He's not a tired rider if he can set the, the pace like this. He's got you know, Zhangli on his back wheel there. Well, you also get an added motivation if you're a team helper in a race like this when you get your team leader into a breakaway group and there it allows you to find that little bit of extra energy that if you'd been uh, actually doing it for yourself, you might not be able to muster. Flags of Belgium and the flags of Flanders. But let me remind you, we are very much in France here, but we're racing with all speed towards the Belgian frontier, although we won't get there. We'll stop at Roubaix, about five or six kilometres from Belgium itself. But this is very typical Belgian roads as far as the spectators are concerned. And with the beautiful blue skies today, we are expecting thousands as the race gets into it. Oh, go on. ...has been disrupted with continual falls and flat tyres, but these boys have had no such problems, and it's David Boucher, Boucher, who brings them off the cobblestones there now, turns right and kicks quickly out the corner. There are ten riders together, and he's thinking of Andre Greipel. So the American team on the left of our picture driving there as well here now to try and keep their leaders in a position to pounce later. Each sector we clear, we're getting closer to sector 16, which is the entrance into the forest of Arenberg. Get a chance here to see how difficult these cobblestones are. Uh, compared to the cobblestones in the Tour of Flanders, these are much more difficult. They're a much rounder cobblestone, and many of these roads are only used really by farmers. Well, our man there from uh, Uscatel has got himself just about on the back of the peloton now. He's had an awful long chase to rejoin. Now, this is a very difficult race, and it's now being that elimination at the back end of the main field. And you may notice as well that in this instance, by the way, the police don't use their normal bikes. They normally use a big tour. <laughs> Off sector 20 here. Let's look how narrow that exit is. But a very, very dry road and it's proving to be hazardous, the dust on the road today taking riders down, losing the grip on the front wheel. That is a very big peloton, they've just come off. Hey, come on, come on. 
nice shot of uh, Tor Hush off there, the world champion, stalking his prey. He finished second in this event last year. Would like to go one better. He's alongside Heinrich Hausler, who is also a very good finisher if he gets a shot at it. And looks as though Hushoft is happy with the way things are going at the moment. So much, uh, can you believe, that Norwegian television, and it's not a big sport in Norway, cycling is showing seven hours today of Paris-Roubaix, not just the race itself, but historical stuff as well. Now that means they're expecting Tour to win. Well, they know that Tor Hushoft has uh, got a very good chance of winning second in the race last year. This is the leading group now. That gap is continuing to go up, Phil. And I would think very shortly the main field will start to get a little bit concerned about a gap of 205 for Andre Greipel. This is Stanglash now driving on the front, just his eyes dead set ahead here now. Section section 19 at the moment at uh, Kiranang who's looking to get himself at victory number four no shortage though of riders who'll support Tom Bona I wouldn't think he would be a very popular winner even though uh, in France not Belgium Kevin Van Emper was the rider on the front he'll be uh, the sacrificial lamb for the uh, first section of cobblestones and in reserve they will hold their three star players Bonin, Sylvain Chavanel and Herd Stegemans still with the leaders here 10 of them, they were at 12 at one point, but we've slipped away two, but the strong men are here. Bonin back at the peloton in a perfect position now, and if we see Tom Bonin near the... Because he's actually the, the leader of the new World Pro, the World Pro Tour. Yes, they also have the Latvian champion uh, now as well, uh, Gatis uh, Smukulis on their squad as well. That's about the biggest hill you'll see on the course today, a slight rise here, this is a flat area of France, so we found much more difficult obstacles, Europe car who have gone on the floor there. Well, oh. it was halfway down the pack, you see what happened, he just made contact with the uh, pavement at the side of the road there, and again, because these guys are trying to take risks, that looked to me as if it could very well have been uh, Mathieu Claude. Hit the deck rather painfully. We saw a lot of this in the Tour of Flanders last week, but again, it's happened on good stretches of road, which is very... ...because they will have to battle through this one before lining themselves up for the very famous, and I would say scary, Forest of Arenberg section. Well, we're looking here at the chase group at the moment, and uh, number 197 there is Sebastian Turgo, familiar name again from last week, up in the move, and also working hard there, Luca Paolini. I think he may have started the move, actually. But look at the risks that riders are prepared to take, Phil, to get themselves to the front end of the main field before they go onto the cobblestone sections. And that man on the left oh. there took a serious risk because uh, he nearly took a supermarket sign with him. It doesn't uh, take your own trolley along, your chariot, but uh, he's back in the peloton. We lost a lot of ground there. This is the head of the group now. Two minutes 40 is the gap here, so they're not saying it's, uh, it's gone out to three minutes, but it'll be 240 to the chase group, I think, three minutes to the main field. How precarious those riders attack that. Amazing to see the, the number of different nationalities of flags. I have to say, and there's, there's the crash down on the other side of the road. That's Kevin Van Emp has gone down there very hard. And again, this was pretty much at the back end of the main field as they were jumping around Ooh. trying to avoid Van Imp when he went down. Yeah, a nice little bunny hop there. Did avoid the crash of Van Imp, but the rest were left to sort the bikes out. Well, this is why you have to fight. This is what Paris-Roubaix is all about. Ten riders up front, two minutes 40 is to a small chase group, three minutes to spread. These are the riders who are setting the pace and they're looking very strong because they're not being delayed by any problems. The peloton constantly seeing the odd rider fall out of the peloton and having to get back into the action. The orange Rabobank jersey on the front is Martin Jangale. They are on the section, 17 sections to go to the finish. Havaluita Walers, it's a four-star section, 2,500 meters long. That's 1.5 miles of cobblestones. But what's more scary for these guys is they know what's next on the recipe this afternoon because it's going to be the Forest of Arenberg, the infamous. Over from him, followed by Mitchell Docker, and there's a rider, is that Hincapi again? That's a BMC rider stopped at the side of the road, a bit of chaos there. Now, if you stop so quickly like that, it's normally because you've got a, ma a machine that can be corrected by yourselves. Yeah, it is George again. That's the second time he's had to stop. The first time he had to do something about it. Uh, but he's underway again. 
Well, it's not a good time, one has to say. It's very unfortunate time. But Hincapie is going to have to recover quickly now. The Forest, and if anybody knows this route, it's Big George. Well, uh, Hincapie last uh, week uh, creating a, a fairly impressive record of 16 participations in the tour. A crash at the back again there. You've got to be attentive all the time. That looks like Heinrich Hausler over on the left-hand side. It was, uh, and it was on the central reservation. Unfortunately, he fell and took a nasty prang there because riders hit him and not his bike, which has stayed on the road. Well, everybody, the issues are all really, Phil, because people are extremely nervous now. They know how important it is. There's a split in the main field as well, and Hincapie could very well be behind that split. So he's going to have a hard time now getting himself to the front end of this race for the Forest of Arenberg. Well, that is a very nasty fall. It's a pity the rider didn't stay where the bike stayed because he fell right under the wheels of the advancing nervous energy, fighting for position all the time to stay in the first 10 or 15 places. And these boys aren't concerned with what's happening behind. They're pushing on here towards the forest as we get through the town. Then we'll leave the town over the railroad crossing and onto the long straight of Arenberg. So we're looking here at the 10 leaders and uh, tentative moves here, but quickly scudding across is uh, David Velo of uh, Canada and Europe car. They're really just uh, losing a little bit of their application at the moment. Well, uh, they're all starting to get nervous. They now know they're about to uh, experience the forest of Arenberg and they're hoping to get a little bit of a recovery and, uh, and respite from the, the real difficult pedaling that they've put on so far at the front end of this main field because they all know how hard the forest of Arenberg is. Most of the teams uh, throughout the week leading up to Paris have actually been out to, to reconnoitre the course. And that's lift shafts there of the local coal mine uh, which was an operating coal mine not anymore as we now come through Arenberg and the right through the greenery there is a dead straight cobbled road this is a protected nature area actually and it's opened only for the Paris Roubaix as the riders now line up for the dead straight road you can actually see it straight through the trees waiting for them and as you said earlier Phil it only gets opened up once a year and that is for Paris Roubaix Ten riders are going to get there first with an approximate lead of two minutes. <laughs> As you see the riders now getting straight. It's, uh, and just look at all the campers, oh boy, how this race has changed. <laughs> over the years the spectators are now parking in their overnight vehicles here just like the Tour de France waiting for the race to enter Arenberg it is possible to get to the finish by the way after this race has gone through because you can jump on the nearby freeway and you're straight into Roubaix the riders go off and are going to go. you can hear that bell ringing by the way at the finishing line the uh, under 23s are just finishing a much shorter version of their own Paris Roubaix and one rider has won on his own, but I couldn't see from commentary position where he was. <laughs> Forest here, this is five stars, 2.4 kilometers, and it's sector 16, and 10 men have got in there with a lead of about 2 minutes 10. Well, that 2.4 kilometres in length, Phil, corresponds to a, a very long 1.4 miles of some of the most treacherous cobblestones at the north of France. Can th oh, 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 oh. Has had two problems so far before the forest. He's recovered from them both. One was a flat tyre, one was a temporary stop, uh, but he's got back into the peloton. And now it really is quite literally in the forest, every man for himself. Pick your own route and hope it's the best one. Well, Martin Elmig is the rider in the red and white jersey, a champion of Switzerland on the front now, and he's taking advantage of uh, picking a clear way over these cobbles. They are unbelievable cobbles, and you might just see a little uh, hint of green, and that's because the grass is popping up through these, uh, these cobblestones, which have been around since the 1800s. And if you walk over to the right-hand side, away from this crowdville, you well, well, well may walk into a wild boar.
Well, there's nothing boring about this race right now. The flag of Flanders obscuring our view, but we're back on front now with Martin Elmiger, the champion of Switzerland. <laughs> before, but they are here in their thousands. Well, this is section 16 to go, the very, very famous forest of Arenberg, 2.5 kilometers long, five-star rating, one and a half miles of cobblestones, and the speed that they're going over here is un... <laughs> front doing all of the work Martin Elminger the champion of Switzerland and now there's somebody trying to get clear of the main field well if you don't know how fast 55 kilometers an hour is that's just hey! Come on! Come on! 35 miles an hour if you need to do it yourself just divide by 1.6 a minute and 50 seconds so once the to the action for the forest they've closed that gap down alarmingly quickly uh, in more than a spot of bother now Olivier Bonner of the French chef on come on come on come The peloton he had to make a stop, but he got back okay, so he's at a disadvantage. He's gonna have to work his way through that peloton, but he's been in that position before and he's done it. 84 well. kilometers. <laughs> Turn to the right hand side and go and find this brand new section at Milan Foss to Busigny. And the reason the organization have put that in was because they wanted to shorten the distance between the two cobblestone sections, preventing any riders left behind of getting themselves back into the race. The Rabo Bank. Tom Bonin should have recognized him when he stood up he's a tall boy well this is the wrong place for Tom Bonin to have a problem Phil and uh, this is going to be very difficult for the former Belgian champion and hey. Oh. Hey! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! 
The problem is they are so distributed around the course and he's indicated oh, I need a back tire and I need it now but I think he needs not just a back wheel where we've cut away from Bonham because the heads of the peloton are now coming off and they're all looking around because they've probably uh, wondering what on earth has happened uh, to one of the big favourites. Well, the other big problem, Phil, as well, is in fact the uh, team cars behind the race. Go on, go on! Go on, go on! Go on, go on! Come on, lad. That's Matt Bramio here. Get in. I don't believe it. Go on, lads. Go on. He's now coming out of the forest of Arenberg with a massive disadvantage. Well, he's got a wheel or a bicycle, and uh, a lot of the official cars are shown not to go on. But this might be. This is actually a team car that's here, so he's got through. Well, that's a team Sky car. There, you can see at the front of the main field, sitting in the middle, there is the world champion from the American team, Garmin Cervelo Torhusov. So no problems at all for him. There's a big crash there as you were speaking, Paul, right on the straight road again. Lamprey's gone down. AG2R are on the floor. On the floor, Movie Star are down. Well, lots this has been the pattern of the day. They've been falling on the straight roads. I think it's because this race has been so difficult, so hard. Everyone's thrown caution to the wind since the very first uh, kilometres of the race, and they're all extremely tired so far. Riders falling, and the Lamprey rider who went down was Dmitry uh, Kriptsov of the Ukraine there. Anyway, 1 minute 50 is the gap, despite all of the chaos left behind. And the biggest man in trouble, Tom Bonin. So for the rest of today, Tom Bonin is going to have his work cut out now to try and win Paddy Roubaix. This is the leading group here. One minute, 50 seconds, the gap. And uh, they'll be blissfully unaware of the chaos in the forest as they continue to push on. Well, they're trying to get themselves organised now at the front end of the main field. They realise that there is chaos behind and this is the possibility to put the hammer down or the last nail into the coffin of any of the riders who got left behind on the forest of Arenberg. And one of those... Yes, this is, that's, that's the big thing. It's OK if you're strong and everything's going right, but have you got the mental approach to recover from these situations? He was... Uh, quite rightly I think looking a little bit upset in the forest because there was nobody able to get to him he was seeing faces at the back of that bunch he'd never seen in his life before and uh, gonna have to pass them all to get back into the action well this is uh, what Paris Roubaix is all about uh, looks like uh, big uh, Johan van Sommeren coming to the front now trying to whip it up looking over his shoulder. you see these riders keep looking over their shoulders they want to make sure they've got the right riders in the group this is the movie star rider I think here and number seven there is Tom Stamschneider from Leopard Trek, these boys recovering from that shunt we've just seen and trying to get back in the action. Well, there's a bit of organisation here from Quickstep, and that's because Tom Bonin has got himself into this group. There he is, number 41, the team coming up alongside him. He's got Gert Stegemans just in front of him. Yep. He has to now stay calm for the next few kilometres or so to try and ride himself back into this race. He's got his teammates to help him. That's the importance of having strong men at this stage of the race. He's also got Leif Hoster in this group, another Belgian cyclist who must have been delayed. He's going to have to recover. You see around the cuffs of his shirt there, his racing jersey, the bands of the rainbow, uh, depicting a former world road race champ. Very, very quick change, almost uh, so quick it deceived the eye there, but he changed his new bike, the mechanic managed to get up to him, which is why he shouted to a teammate there, carry on mate, I'll catch back up with you. Confident man, as uh, the team car here now is trying to uh, chivvy him along a little bit. There's the donkeys in the field, but these are the thoroughbreds on the bikes. Well, uh, hopefully a little bit of calm now in the leading group of 10 riders as they start to line themselves up for this uh, brand new section of cobblestones, the section from Milan Foss to Bousigny. It's uh, coming up in about two kilometres time. The breakaway containing the Australian uh, Mitchell Docker. He's been out front since they came onto the first section of cobblestones, 27 in a group of eight and then strengthened by the arrival of Andre Greipel, another well-known rider 
from Australia, although he's a German, but he's won the Santos Tour down under. And 1.4 kilometres long, that converts to around about uh, 0.8 of a mile. Here's big Tom Bone and trying to cross the gaps now and reach the main part of the race here. You can see the cars are being pulled out. It's a lonely ride back to the front for Tom Bone, and he knows he's got to do it himself because the boys aren't going to help him. Well, he's uh, run out of teammates there. He sees this as being a very dramatic part of the race to try and get himself across the gap as quickly as possible. He will be hoping for a slight amount of uh, slowing down in the group in front of him to reintegrate this race, and then he'll battle his way through one. He's caught a group who've been left behind there, and he's not taking any prisoners at all here. He's going to go straight by and head out to the next section of cobblestones. So a bike change for Tom Bonin then, as he now tries to repair the damage caused by the Forest of Arlenberg. Now he knows what a lonely life it is, even for a team leader in the Queen of the Classics, because this lady has a bite. We're looking at the group here now, which contains Tom Bonin, still trying to recover from that problem. The peloton itself, I'm never sure which is the peloton anymore, because our cameras are now all over the place, as the race is completely split up in the forest itself. Well, that is uh, what is the, the front end of the main field, and it's not a very large main field either, because there was a decimation of the peloton when they went through the forest of Arenberg. They have actually slowed down a fraction there, Phil, before they get to the next section of cobblestones, and that might just give Tom Bonin a chance to get himself back into this race. Well, sat here, the back is last bone. Uh, this is the section now, we're now on section uh, 17, uh, section 8, sorry, we're counting down. We're now on section 15 here which is the, the new one at the Milan Foss, where we've turned right as we came out of the forest and we're now onto this new section of cobblestones. We saw a little shot there of Lars Bohm. He'll love this because the former world cyclocross champion is on his terrain right now. Goodbye to section 15 at Milan Foss for the leaders. Well, the leaders are starting to lose a fair chunk of their advantage. They went into the forest of Arenberg with an advantage of uh, two and a half minutes. They're now standing on an advantage of one minute and ten seconds. But it's absolute chaos in the main field behind. One or two small groups are fracturing off the front. But the main field, I think, slowing down for a moment. Into bike and getting rid of the other one to some souvenir hunter on the side of the road. But he's done it now. These boys oblivious to what's going on behind them as they run out 77 kilometers left to go that's about 48 miles 46 miles still to ride well these guys and this is uh, going back to the next group on the road now trying to uh, get themselves an advantage it's the uh, the poursuivant the, the chasing group of they've uh, still still an advantage off the front end of the main field as they went through the forest of Arenberg and they're trying to consolidate on that but behind the main field has slowed down a fraction well, this is the second group on the road now, as they've just come off uh, sector 15 at Milan Foss as well. Next sector is about four kilometers in front now, and Johan van Summeren of the American Garmin Cervelo team has got into this group. Last back, uh, Jürgen Rowlands, Quintiato, last boom. Uh, Frederick Gaydon, a former winner and an opportunist, and Baden Cook, the Australian, who says he's ready for Paris Roubaix today. Well, I tell you what, the race have given him a number 171, and when you have a one at the end of your number, that's usually an indicator that you're the team leader. And Baden Cook, I saw him last night uh, checking all the equipment as we went to have a look at his uh, team car, and he was making sure that everything was right. And a nice little anecdote about uh, this team, uh, Team uh, Saxo Bank. They've got handmade tyres, and in this day and age of mass production, uh, I would think that cost him a few pennies. Well, we'd like to see a great performance out of Cookie. He lives down um, in Melbourne and uh, is often seen riding up and down uh, the beach road there outside of Brighton. But uh, he's ready for a good result, I think, now. 32 years of age. He won a couple of races last year. And he actually won his last race at Saint-Quentin last year which is not far away. This is still the recovery from Tom Bonin, and he's being left to do all of the chasing himself. It's a bit of a ride now, two and three quarter minutes, and the men that matter to him are ahead. Well, I've seen many men ride themselves back into Paris-Roubaix in the past, and somebody there at the side of the road got another slight problem. That's Sylvain Chavanel, so it's not a great day of racing for Quick Step well, here this afternoon, because when Lady Luck is not on your side, she isn't a lot of fun. The two done by Geraint Thomas, and he puts him down as a dark horse to win this race this afternoon. Let's hope so. It'd be a great result. Uh, no Welshman certainly ever won this race, and uh, no British rider either. 
Well, we're just looking back down the line there. I have to say, I've got my fingers crossed here this afternoon for Tom Bonham, but he's looking at a big ask there, Phil, because he's uh, a minute behind the main field that he's got to try and pull back. I have seen comebacks like this in Paris-Roubaix in the past, and one of the famous comebacks I remember was a guy by the name of Fons de Wolf. He was around about five minutes behind at one stage after the Forest of Arenberg. He fought his way back through the waist and eventually finished up in fourth place on that occasion. Well, what you have to remember is that the bad luck of Bonan can very quickly befall somebody else like Cancellara or even George Hincapi, and suddenly you're all chasing. We've just entered sector 14 now at uh, Brion. This is near Tilloy, and uh, this is a two-star section, so it's a nice little hors d'oeuvre as we head towards uh, uh, Orchie. Yes, just 1,100 metres long and that corresponds to around about 0.7 of a mile and it is an easier section, if you can have such a thing as an easy section of cobblestones because all of these cobblestones, they vibrate and they bounce right the way up through the machine and you can see the riders' arms and legs are shaking because of the cobblestones. This is probably the only race in the world, Phil, where the day afterwards you've actually got sore hands. Now this is Chavanel here, the hero of last week, finished second in Flanders, is now finding himself placed into a select chase group and he's now, I think, behind the Tom Bonin. Oh, he's actually with Bonin now. So he is in this group with Tom Bonin. Well, those two strong riders, two pre-race favourites, finding themselves on the defensive. Well, that could be a big advantage because the two of them have got the form. We saw how well they were very dominant in the race last week. And working together, that might give them a very good chance of riding back into the main field. And I think they're about to do it. don't even get a chance to witness from the television cameras that's absolutely right as the riders start to swab off the road rash because most of the riders at some stage have been in problems today early on we had a lot of riders go down many of them on good roads individually just hitting roadside furniture central reservations traffic signs and down they go this is the leading group being led again now by the champion of switzerland in the red martin elmiger martin jangalai uh, takes over the dutchman then follows through Mitchell Docker here, drives through. They're all working here, and that's why they're hanging on. Well, they've got a 45-second advantage, Phil, over a rather interesting group, which is coming across the gap. Uh, the main field uh, around about two minutes in arrears with uh, Frédéric Guédon, former winner of Paris-Roubaix for France. And, and at 38 years of age, he's still showing uh, complete and utter uh, respect for this bike race. Yes, and Frederick Gedon, well, his manager, Mark Maddio, said only yesterday, he doesn't think Gedon can win again. He's getting too old, but he'll be very much a player. Well, I think that uh, Maddio himself won this race on two occasions, but Gedon is a man for the big races. He is, certainly is. Uh, he, he's won less than 10 races in his yeah. career, but if you put into those races, Phil, Paris-Roubaix and Paris-Tours, that's not too bad for a career. I'd settle for just two wins. <laughs> Well, there's the composition of the chase. Johan van Summeren, part of the Garmin Cervelo team. Jürgen Rowlands, another reliable boy. Lars Bohm, very strong on situations like this. And Baden Cook, the Australian. So there's the composition of the chase group. We're looking down now. Leopard Trek is doing the pacemaking on what is left of the main peloton at the moment. And Tom Bonan's group with Sylvain Chavanel are a minute further back of this group. And that's a long, angry line, too, uh, at the tail end of this peloton. So the pressure is really remaining on here. 
No, certainly everybody realizes uh, they need to pull this race back together. This race is far from over and there's still a lot more artillery to come out and be fired on the cobblestones here in the northern part of France. Just sitting on the back there, the rider from the Francaise de Jure, in fact, is the former Belarusian champion, Jotas uh, Hutorovic, a very good sprinter. Martin Mordson, number three, trying to snatch at wheels and hang on to the whip end of the race just there. We're still on sector 14 here, which is quite a long section. Looking at the bouncing wheels now as we're on the second part of sector four, sector measured at three and a half kilometers. And there's no change in the order at the moment. The breakaway of 10 holding off a chase group, which includes uh, Lars Bonen, uh, Lars Bohm rather, Baden Cook, Frederick Guedon, Johan van Sommeren, they're riding at 40 seconds. The main field a couple of minutes back, and then you go back a further minute uh, to a very, very strong chase by Tom Bonin. But whenever we see Bonin, nobody else is chasing. Well, they all know the reputation of the man, I think possibly, Phil, because they can't work with him because he's such a strong bike rider, and he will be motivated like anything to ride himself back into this race. He won't give up. He knows he's got the form, and he knows how important this week of racing is for him in the whole of this year's calendar because Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix are the races that he wants to win. Well, Jimmy Angulvon driving at the front, flicks his arm there, needs a little bit of help. Oh, this is the chase group here, I beg your pardon. This is the chase group with Baden Cook is in this. No, it's in there. It's in there. It's in there. It's Ja, die hebben erachter al. Komt ons geen droog toch, Dat is Roerans, Kinziato. Kinziato, van Summer, Koek. Van Saxo, uh, van Summer, Kinziato op kop. Maar Roerans, op de Zabin. Allee, Kinziato! Roerans, kom aan! He sits third in line here. The man from Garmin Sabello looking very, very comfortable at the moment, but he is surrounded by the riders from Leopard Trek. Yes, he's sitting on the wheel there of uh, Fabian Cancellaro. Doesn't look too concerned just now. And uh, really, they're still knowing that Tom, there's Hausler. He's been down on the floor, and it looks now he's hurting. He's being dropped here. Well, he had a very nasty crash just a few moments ago, and that tends to knock the stuffing out of you, especially in a race like Paris-Roubaix. But he will battle to try and stay in contact if he can, because the team Garmin Cervelo from the United States have said this week that they really want to put everything onto the shoulders of Torhushoff this afternoon. But when the lights go out in a race like this, you can feel every cobblestone hitting that body of yours. You most certainly can all of a sudden you feel to be made of rubber coming to the end of sector 17 now and Zhang Li has made a tactical move here he's decided with the gap down to 40 seconds he better start doing something about it goodbye to sector 14 for the Dutchman and he's looking oh he's just realized he's left them all behind <laughs> Massive pile up as we're looking here. Riders on the floor. Roger Hammond is down there. 
from Team Sky, and Mike. he's had a podium place here in the past. And B Tom Bonin's down again. Bjorn Lukemans has got delayed on the right. Another favourite has gone down. Geraint Thomas, the British national champion, over on the right-hand side of the road. This is not a great day for Tom Bonin. That's him on the left-hand side of the road there. He's trying to fix his machine to get well, himself going again. This. He won't believe this, but this is how the Paris-Roubaix makes a man of you or makes a fool of you. It has no favourites, believe me, and now... Hey, come on! Hey, come on! Hey! 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 He's finished third in this race before, and Hammond uh, back in uh, 2000... <laughs> So there's Jangli over to our right, just gone off camera, and if he looks over on his right, he's going to see these about to be regrouped. So very shortly, there'll be 10 more men heading for Roubaix, 35 seconds in front of the rest. Which isn't very much, is it? It is not, but actually just looking down the road there, Phil, uh, you can see the gap between the cars, and that's an indicator yep. that that seven-man group is coming across the gap. So we very shortly, as we go to the next section of cobblestones at Beuvry la forêt to Orchie, we could have a 17-man leading group with some big names. Uh, names yeah. like uh, Baden Cook, Frédéric Guédon, and Manuel Kinziato, who rides for a BMC. That's him there with the red jersey. Speaking to uh, Jim Okovitz yesterday uh, when we were at the start, li the start line in Compiègne, Jim Okovitz said, just watch out for Manuel Kinziato. He's a guy who comes from a background of riding on the track, and I think the suppleness in his pedaling action is allowing him to ride very nicely over the... <laughs> Boon is het toch altijd of niet? Is Boon bijgekomen? Boon! Wie is er van Boon? Hey, go on.
Zhangli is also pacing it. This is the junction here, and it's coming at 65 kilometers from the finish. Some big names now crossing the gap, including Matthew Heyman, Baden Cook, Lars Bohm, Johan van Sommeren, a previous winner in uh, Frederick Guedon. Well, Matty Heyman, he's on the front of this group, clawing it all back together. He's a strong bike rider, a former Commonwealth gold medalist, and uh, a man seriously good to have on a team, because he's worth two men, I would say, when he starts to fire properly. Lars Back is the rider who's coming across for the American HTC High Road squad. Strange the way tactics are work out as we now head on to section number 13 to go, Beuvry La Forêt. This is sector 13 now, Beuvry La Forêt, and uh, just as the leaders come on to it, the chasers have joined here, which has now put uh, Frederick Gaydon, a former winner, up in this front group. Matthew Heyman, Lars Back, Baden Cook, Lars Boom is here as well, Johan van Sommeren. They've just crossed the gap to give us quite a strong leading group, and nobody is what we would call a real favourite for the race. And uh, that is why Paris Roubaix has no favourites. But uh, we've seen Tom Bonin crash, but the better news is that Sylvain Chavanel has rejoined in the peloton, uh, but Bonin is still chasing. Well, Bonin uh, was with Sylvain Chavanel, so he wasn't too far from getting himself back into this bike race. The only question mark now, Phil, is how seriously is he injured and how badly has his morale been hit by having two bits of bad luck go against him on what should normally be his queen stage. Yeah, absolutely right. It is very difficult to uh, stay mentally strong in situations like this. One of the best exponents of that was uh, Sean Kelly, the great Irish cyclist. He never allowed anything uh, to affect his target, which was to win at the end of the day. He won by Roubaix on two occasions. This is Goraj Stangli now, the champion of Slovakia, who is on the front and driving, followed by the champion of Switzerland too, Martin Elmiger. Well, you mentioned Sean Kelly, sitting about uh, six people away from us here, commentating from uh, another European uh, television network. And yesterday, he got his bike out, Phil, and rode over 140 kilometers of these cobblestones in a celebration that the organization had put together here, where 1,000 cyclotourists have participated in a ride over the cobbles. And that'll be an ongoing thing. It's called the Paris Roubaix Challenge now, which is the day before this event. Uh, uh, they finished it just after the forest of uh, the Labre, uh, instead of bringing it into the finish in Roubaix, because of course uh, installations going in for television at the old velodrome. Just look at this picture now. A long, long, thin line of desperate men in the peloton trying to reach that breakaway and sh shut it all down. And uh, some, some minute behind at least, and we've got no more pictures of him. Tom Bonin is still out there somewhere. Well, all of a sudden, we're looking at a situation here where the race is about to regroup. One moment ago, it was split all over the valleys of the north of France, and now, all of a sudden, because some incredible chasing that is being done, it's about to pull itself all back together as we come out of the cobblestone section at beuvry la forêt 17 riders up front, and here they are at the moment. Uh, sitting at the back of the group there now is Sebastian Rossler, very strong man to have in the breakaway being driven on as always by the Rabobank team as they leave sector 13 now but the, you might well be right very shortly we could see a, a real big peloton of cyclists and that is not the usual Paris Roubaix pattern with just 63 kilometers to go which is just on 40 miles left to race well, uh, this is uh, the next uh, feeding station at Beuvry La Forêt. These riders are taking on board as many drinks as possible. The white jersey you can see in the middle with the rainbow bands around it. Well, that, of course, is the world champion Torhushov riding for the American team, Garmin Cervelo. And looking extremely useful at the moment, I have to say. This is a man that might be well taking the race to victory day. What an incredible victory that would be for Team Garvin Cervelo as well. Well, uh, they did a good job signing him up before the World Championships in Geelong, Australia last year. Nobody expected him to come up with the victory. They thought it was going to be a very tough race that would be split to pieces. But Hushoff just sat there and waited. When it came to sprint out of the pack, he timed it to perfection. Well, this is the coming together, as it seems, at 63 kilometres to go. It looks as though we're going to have a massive peloton at the front, and the only favourite so far out of the hunt, and might yet get back in, is Tom Bonin. 63 kilometers left just looking at the riders coming through here keep your eye out for number 41 but this is the main heart of the peloton now contacting at the dreaded name of Orki because anybody that knows Perry Bay knows that this is the gateway to a horrible set of cobblestones no it is uh, unfortunately they, that section of cobblestone is uh, known as the route of the cemetery <laughs> and that could well be the cemetery for one or two riders here this afternoon but 
Paris-Roubaix, Phil, it's all about guts. It's all about determination. Everyone will have some bad luck and you have to try and bounce back. It's a real archaic competition where you have never to give up in a race like this because anything can happen. Well, I know that uh, on Belgian television, the Belgian people are going to be just fretting it to where is Tomica and another rider is on the ground and it looks as though Quick Step is down again here. Well, this is... Uh, oh, no, it's Chavanel again. I couldn't... I thought it looked like... I didn't want to say it, but this is the third time for Chavanel and he's come out there, clipped a wheel. Very, very lucky, but he almost uh, got run over there as well by uh, uh, Gordic Garden of uh, the... Uh, back on Soleil team I think it was well I think if anybody has to uh, actually put together a number of ch bad bad luck stories today it's going to be team quick step because he went down very hard I don't think he's going to get up from that one well, well he, certainly he is hurt him. well <laughs> this man will not give up this reminds me of when he had the Mayo Jaune in the Tour de France in the hell of the north he was constantly at the back of the race defending wasn't he he was fighting to pull himself back into the race on all occasions uh, but that time driving the breakaway there are 17 of them now at least there was last time we checked uh, yep. there are still 17 riders as far as we know we're not getting too many shots from the back but I don't think we're unhitching anybody here this breakaway is strong and it could be causing one or two problems back in the main field well it's actually rather strange tactics on rolling here because we've got this 17 man leading group and at just 20 seconds behind them this group of uh, four riders rash Deccan Colbert, Lisa and Gregory Rast and they are trying to make the contact with the leading group and yet the main field is only 25 seconds further behind them and a big spread across the field here right now end of sector 12 for the second chase group as well and this is the second chase group the camera's got in behind them now is he going to carry them up towards the leaders four riders there are chasing and the peloton a further 20 seconds back of those four riders now everyone being extremely attentive uh, you can see sitting every now and again that white jersey with the rainbow bands around it the world champion Torhushov he's playing a waiting game I don't think he's put a foot wrong here this afternoon and he could be the man looking to go one better placing than he went last year because last year he was in second place well the sky boys the Garmin Savello riders uh, bring the main part of the field there off that sector of sector 12 at Orshi as I say, only 1.7 kilometres of it. As we look here now at Deccan Kolb, who's a big name already, a youngster who came over to the top pro teams this year. Very astute signing by HTC High Road. This is Matthew Heyman grimacing his teeth. Boy, these fellas are already at 100% of effort here. They know they need to close it down now. Tor Hushoft is right there, and this is going to be the trap of the four chasers. They're going back, five chasers by the look of it. Well, at the front end of the main field, you might just have noticed the face of Juan Antonio Fletcher. Now, there he is on the left-hand side, starting to be very attentive indeed. And he's the man that uh, Team Sky this afternoon felt had got a very good chance of getting himself the victory. They've got now the organisation coming from Garmin Cervelo. They've seen the possibility of a spit as we've got Tor Hushoft off the front. 57 kilometers to go now the world champion in white for Garmin Cervelo and Juan Antonio Fletcher the most successful Spanish rider ever in the history of Paris Bay but never a winner yet is driving here for the British Sky team we've moved up to the uh, this is the main group here contains Matthew Heyman as well but really they're virtually all together here they're just trying to close this down well, now so they can the there. there is indeed somebody's gone down and this is the remnants of it here the Europe car rider is on the floor the Amiga Farmer rider looks a little bit injured on the left of the road well uh, you've just got to be attentive you've got to fight your way back in this race all of the time you have to stay at the front end of the main field well, and not well in fact that's Pazzato who's gone down here well, and he was placed last year yeah that's not too good for Pazzato and his uh, management was saying it's time he gave us a result well he just has he crashed well has he uh, has he got enough wind in those lungs of his to get himself back up he's back on the bike but he's uh, a little bit stuffed there well, a little bit groggy no that doesn't look as he's hurt his left arm as well and he's got to sort everything out himself for some reason his team car either haven't seen him on the floor or they're still to pass by well a uh, bit of bad luck there for uh, for that man as we go back into this group of chasers in fact, this is not a group of chases. We're back to the Ted de la Cour. So that was uh, Martin Elminger coming through now. The grimace on the face of Andre Greipel says, uh, we want to survive in this race here this afternoon, but I have a feeling we're going to see a general regrouping and the whole of the race is going to have to open up again. 
Well, we're seeing another attack here, and uh, I'm not too sure where we've gone now, but this is Amigo Farmalotto, who's trying to move clear of a group which surely is going to regroup. This is the sort of main sector of the peloton, which is getting alarmingly small. Well, what we've got now, Phil, is a group of 21 riders at the front end of the main field, but they're only separated from the peloton by a mere 35 seconds. And this is the head of the race here now with Tor Hushoft. This is the head of the peloton at 35 seconds, I presume. Hushoft is in here. Doing honour to the world champion. George jersey. Hincapi is here. He is indeed. George Hincapi is here. So too is Fabian Cancellara. Still out of the race are the two big favourites from Quick Step, Bonin and Chavanel. They have not recovered from their problems. Riding over the front two for Team BMC. A lot of riders in that red and black jersey of BMC racing. Uh, Alessandro Balan, the former world champion. There's two very nasty sections that are about to come up, Phil. They're the sections from Orchi to Bercé. But the one that I feel could be the, the start of the changing of the face of this race, Monson Pavel. That's coming up in about eight kilometres time. And Monson Pavel is a very nasty stretch of cobblestones. And I would think uh, that... Well, it's regrouping slowly despite the disruptions. This has been a very, very aggressive race today and a very strange pattern. We've never had, a, and we had the same situation last week in Flanders. The breakaway has never really got clear of the attention of the peloton. Well, Garmin Cervello are the riders in the black and uh, white jerseys at the front end of the main field. That's uh, Tyler Farrar right in the middle. And I wonder if today he's going to uh, sacrifice himself for the chances of his Norwegian teammate, Tor Hushoff. But they have got what's important to have at the ends of Paris-Roubaix. A lot of riders from the same team in the group to give support. Well, only time will tell that. But for the moment, they are looking to be in a very strong position here. They've got a lot of riders up front to Garmin Cervello as they continue to course 35 seconds back of the leaders. Looking straight into the eyes of the peloton here, 54 kilometers more or less still to go, about 33 miles to race to the finish of this year's Paris Bay. No decisions yet, there is a breakaway, of course there is, we've seen a lot of it. Fazzato has gone out with a nasty crash, I don't think he'll come back, but we're now seeing a blanket of 35 seconds across the field as we charge onto sector 11, a 2.6 kilometer section. Yes, you can see this sector 11, uh, Orchi to Bercé, 2.6 kilometres in length, Phil, and that is extremely long at 1.6 miles. I have to say that I think uh, Team uh, Garmin Cervello are tactically in a very good position here this afternoon because they've got two riders in that leading group of 21. Rash, who is a young rider, Johan van Summeren, and they've got a host of riders in that group behind to support Torhushoft. Well, just look at the speed they're going over, the section of cobblestone now, they're driving on this breakaway, it cannot be safe at 17 riders now, they're going to have to be brought back by the peloton at some stage. There is a couple, there has been a couple of riders reach them, not too sure who they were. We've seen Filippo Pozzato really look quite hurt with his left arm, although he was getting back on his bike when we did see him. Uh, he's got a bit of work now. The peloton are on to the same section now, it's being driven on by Astana at 35 seconds the gap and bouncing over the cobblestones there right at the back of the race uh, is Alex Rasmussen of the HTC High Road uh, team they're riding those specialized bikes which are having such a great successful season I have to say having won Milan San Remo with Matthew Goss and the fourth Tour de Flanders title last week so maybe they're going to need every help they can get now to bring back these leaders well, now Team Sky looking to take themselves uh, to the front and dominant in this year's, year's Paris-Roubaix. They're looking after their man who is in second position there, Juan Antonio Fletcher. I'm not sure of the position of Geraint Thomasville because uh, Geraint He's Thomas went down in a very nasty crash uh, with Tom Bonin and may well not have got himself back into the event. I, I don't think he's here. Also went down in the same crash was Roger Hammond and he's a very strong man in Paris-Roubaix. We've certainly seen other riders here from the Sky team who have done quite well. There's Fabian Cancellara on the far side of our picture in the white top to his jersey. He's okay. Hincapi is here, just peeping in behind. Hincapi's kept a pretty close eye on the whereabouts of Fabian Cancellara. To the far left of our picture, the world champion in that rainbow colours. And that is Tor Hushoft. And the Norwegian uh, 
are broadcasting seven hours of this race today live into their country so they clearly are expecting Hushoff to do something special I have a feeling there's a slight truce in the main field here this afternoon Phil because uh, we've all of a sudden seen that leading group of 21 riders move up to an advantage of one minute and five seconds as they now are battling this sector number 11 to go from Orchis les Orchis or Orchis les Orchis to Bercy 940 meters just short and sharp this one this is the uh, poker face to Martin Elmiger the champion of Switzerland who also likes to see his way over these cobblestones Jangalai just behind him this is the breakaway which started with eight riders very early on at the first sector of cobblestones at Troisville and has slowly uh, grown in stature to 17 uh, plus riders now in fact uh, they're up to 21 so the little group behind I think uh, got across of Dettenkolb etc just looking at Fabian Cancellara riding on the wheel of the world champion in that white jersey with the bands around it Tor Hushoff Cancellara for the moment looks very relaxed he too I don't think has uh, put a foot wrong this afternoon as he's ridden fairly close to the front end of the main oh a little slip there you've got to be attentive for Martin Elmiger that is a sector which uh, on rainy days is absolutely lethal it is so wet on that inside corner today it's just the dust uh, but the dust is causing a lack of grip with those tires uh, still he's recovered from it and the gap is going up slowly now it's a minute 10 seconds you're right Paul the peloton are having a little respite they are but that's I think because of the fact that very shortly the next section of cobblestones after this is Monson Pavel they are long and hard and that's where in the past we've seen a lot of riders make the difference the reason why they're much more difficult to what than what we've had up to now is it goes slightly uphill and if you've got the power in those legs you can ride a man off your wheel this is it now and a little bit of bunny hopping on the far side of the road with an apology from that rider because he almost brought down the rider alongside him as they continue now this is the main field here what uh, what we will call the main field the main chase if you like uh, and uh, sadly without Tom Bonin and without Sylvain Chavanel right now yeah the two animators of last week's race they've had so much bad luck this afternoon it's uh, so difficult in a race like this to keep bouncing back all of the time but Bonin had almost ridden himself back into the main field when he went down hard again because a rider fell off in front of him Ripping his handlebars there, looks like Matty Heyman of Team Sky coming off the sector of cobblestones. The next section is Monzon Pavel, and that's three kilometres long. There's that treacherous right hander. And uh, this is a huge field at this stage of Paris Roubaix because anybody that we have talked about as having a chance of winning this race is either in this group or behind it. It's a big field though. This is the main field in second position there in the black jersey uh, with Team Sky written on it is Juan Antonio Fletcher. He's really looking for the win here this afternoon, but never far away from anybody <laughs> is Fabian Cancellara. No, nor George Hincapie. Those two riders, they are made for Paris Bay, I think. They were honed out of the Parve. Uh, they just love this event. They certainly do. The, the next section of cobblestones that after this one, Phil, that they will line themselves up for is the second longest section of cobblestones in Paris-Roubaix this year. It's three kilometres long, 1.8 miles, and it's a beast. Yes, and that's the end of sector 11. Incidentally, the prize is a trophy, and the trophy is a cobblestone, and the official weight of it is 31 pounds, or 14.8 kilos. You're supposed to lift that after you finish and win Paris Roubaix. Minute 20. So they've done well this sector. 50.6 kilometres, 32 miles still to race to the finish. Just over an hour of racing now. Well, there's a lot more tactics to unfold in this race, and for the moment, one team riding a very good tactical race, Garmin Cervelo. They've got uh, the majority of their riders still either in the front or in the second group on the road and of course their big pre-race favorite Tor Hushoff is looking very comfortable every time we see the main pack yes just how good are those riders feeling that's what they'll be saying to themselves that they try to assess the riders around them this is the leading group here and uh, well it's really shaped this race right now it looked a very insignificant move when eight riders went clear but then it swelled to 10 riders then it swelled to 17 and now there's 21 and now it's a serious situation very serious situation with one or two riders who will be licking their lips at the chance of being in a breakaway like this including a man who's won this race in the past of course uh, Frederic Guedon of France he knows how to pick out the good uh, with the good situations Matty Heyman in the black he's a man who will be looking to be an opportunist or maybe just waiting for the return of his team leader Juan Antonio Fletcher from the second group on the road 
There's plenty of riders willing to set the pace here. That's why it's going up. Kinziato is the BMC rider going through to the front now. And the last Bohm is also in this group away. And he is a brilliant bike handler, world champion at the cyclocross, the winter sport, where you run or ride as long as you finish with your bike. It doesn't matter whether it's on your head or under your saddle because uh, that's the winter sport of cyclocross. And these roads, of course, are very similar uh, to often cyclocross courses. Well, we're uh, zigzagging around the north of France. It's a very complicated, uh, circuitous route on the way up to Roubaix. And again, a crash at the back. Well, this is unbelievable. Again, on a straight, perfect piece of road. And the, this is uh, Bjorn Leukermans again. Well, this Leuk man's been delayed by just about everything today. Well, I don't think Leukermans will have uh, too many good things to say about this year's Paris-Roubaix. The other guy going down there, the Europe car rider from France, was Zaid Hadou. Man that packs a bit of a sprint finish if he can get there to use it, but they're just dropping onto these cobblestones like flies today. There is Leukemans. I really thought that man would be on the podium today, but at the moment he's uh, spending far too much time on the road. Sector 10 now, Mons en Pevel, this is it. We are entering a sector 10, 3,000 metres of Pergsy. This is where surely somebody is going to try and reach this breakaway from the main field. This is a five-star section. It measures in at 3,000 metres, 1.8 miles of some of the worst cobblestones that we've got. And the difficult thing is after about one and a half kilometres, after about a mile, it starts to drag up. And if you've got the power, you can ride across a gap of around about uh, 30 kilometres or so. And it was on this section of cobblestones last year year Phil that a certain man from Switzerland took off yes and boy did he take off uh, it led to accusations that he actually had a motor in his bicycle and would you believe people weren't joking his acceleration was such they thought it couldn't be done by a human beings per <laughs> ground and fighting and dragging your way back into the event and he looked a little bit groggy when he when he went down Sylvain Chavanel but he knows he's got a good set of legs on him here this week and that's why he's trying to fight back into Paris-Roubaix and what a story that would be if the Frenchman was to win this race well, he's riding like a champion and uh, so maybe it's his day maybe the adrenaline's just pouring there he is and uh, well he, he's got light equipment now because he lost half his shorts a minute 35 is <laughs> George Hincap is going to have to get on terms there because this is a crucial stage of the race now. Mons en Pavel, this is where Cancelar destroyed the field last year, facing nearly 30 miles to ride to the finish, but he did it, and now he's on the defensive. There's a little matter of 21 guys in front, 95 seconds ahead. Well, Fabian Cancellara, true to his word, has come to the front. He wants to make this a dramatic race here this afternoon. Followed him, following him is Juan Antonio Fletcher. This up, oh, Ooh, take the risk, <laughs> my boy. Just keep that bike upright if you can. Look at those pedals go. It's the old dust problem. You didn't expect these uh, cobblestones to be so slippery when they're totally dry, but it's the dust. It's just lying on the surface. And now the engine is going, and the engine is in both his legs. This is the move by Fabian Cancellara. Anybody fancy the chances now because he is going. He said during the week, Phil, he said, if you want to ride Paris-Roubaix this week, he said, you better put your seatbelt on because the aeroplane is just about ready to take off. And here he is absolutely flying. Fletcher is in second position, trying to pull his plates up to the this flying Swiss machine. And just behind him, the world champion, Torhushoff. But he's taking every kind of risk to slap out a bit of pain to this field. Now, remember last week, he was drawn onto the attack too early by Tom Bonin. The result was he ran out of steam towards the end. It cost him the race now he's being drawn on the attack by himself because he's got to bridge the gap he has completely imploded <laughs>
a 19 millimeter tire he is riding 27 millimeter tires they're handmade tubular tires when I asked the team mechanics how much of these cost they said we don't know we just go out and buy them well I wonder if the pigeons flown up here and told them what's happening behind because this is the leading group of 21 riders and Cancellara is bringing across the three big names really Cancellara, Hushoft and Fletcher three pre-race favorites they've rid themselves of Chavanel and Bonin because of problems we've seen glimpses of uh, Hincapi who himself has had three problems today that we know of this is Alessandro Balan trying to reach them well I tell you what I looked at the newspaper this morning for uh, the Voix du Nord and it had a great title it said Superman against the extraordinary league of gentlemen and I think we've got them with us this afternoon there's nothing gentlemanly about this pace I'll tell you right now Balan has just hooked up to the back of Fletcher Hushoft has taken a few deep breaths and has managed to get on to the Cancellara Express he's not offering any help the Australian flag flies across the cobbles of Roubaix where once they had an Australian victor with Stuart O'Grady the only Australian to win this event uh, this year they got a first in Milan San Remo with Matthew Goss but he's not up here right now nice move by Alessandro Balan in the red and black there of BMC Racing a look at the gap that he's opened up on that <laughs> section of cobblestones when that man wants to go and puts his head to it he can do incredible things well he chose three kilometers of purgatory to tear the peloton apart and he's knocked off 30 seconds of the breakaways lead all under his own steam just look at this now these are the riders from Garmin Cervelo sat at the back here we've got uh, Tyler Farrow now sat at the back and just ahead of him Andreas Clear they are still in the main chase group but they didn't get on to the Cancellara Express and here it is well you might not have noticed there but nice to see number 181 from Team Radio Shack because that in fact was Robbie McEwen still in with a chance and with every respect to Robbie that's a little bit of a surprise uh, Robbie has never really enjoyed Paris Roubaix now it's all a question of whether Cancellara can reach the leaders and beat them to the sprint in Paris Roubaix he certainly looked over his shoulder there to see what's uh, what's coming three more on the way up well it uh, had to happen it had to be done because that breakaway was not coming back it's now about one minute to the breakaways and it now looks as though help is at hand because this is Fletcher taking up the pacemaking. Well, these guys now know this is a move and uh, people scrambling across, uh, scrambling to stay in contact there. In fact, uh, losing a little bit of uh, a gap there. The, the BMC ride looks like, very much like the shape of George Hincapi coming up. Well, that would be a welcome sight indeed for the Americans, that's for sure. Uh, this is Cancellara off to the right. You've got Fletcher willing to try very hard now. He's recovered from that extraordinary effort by Cancellara. Hushoff is still here and still looking extremely strong, the runner-up of a year ago. Now this is Balan from BMC, he's got himself across that gap. There is a big gap now back to the, the rest of the main field and they will all start to hear the alarm bells ringing as they realise it's time for them to try and do something special if they want to pull back this group. Well, first, second and third, what a difference a year makes. First, second and third in Paris Bay last year was Cancellara, Hushoff, Fletcher. They are the three who've come together on Mons en Pavel. And the others who completed the top six, Roger Hammond, Tom Bowen and Boyne Lukemans, they've all had problems which have put them out the hunt so far today. Well, I uh, have to say one man who's ridden himself back into this race has done a fine job, number 43, Sylvain Chabanel. But uh, he's not going to have that much energy less to chase down this mark charging train. Well, the guys who've just come on the back here, they're going to have to have a few deep breaths before they'll be able to help out. But there's seven riders getting themselves together here and seven good names as well. Here we are, Sector 9. Sector 9, uh, just around about 0.7 kilometres long. That's about 400 yards. But it's all about the uh, repetitive nature of these cobblestones now as they start to make this race much, much tougher every kilometre that we go into it. A mere two stars at 700 metres as the leaders now enter sector nine at Mirigny and they're being chased now by a group of seven riders. Cancellara Fletcher Hushoff has been joined and we've got seven riders now and they're all beginning to get their second wind after that incredible acceleration by Fabian Cancellara. So they're actually starting to help him now. The peloton is at 105.
Well, the peloton is uh, halfway uh, across the gap now, and we can see everybody's taking this extremely seriously. Uh, Fabian Cancellara has said, right, enough is enough. We're going to start to take this race seriously and keep putting the hammer down and ride across the gap, surely but surely. But he's a little bit surprised, probably, because he's got a number of passengers with him this year. Yes, this is when Cancellara was clear last year and Tom Bonin realised he'd missed it and was trying desperately to reach him and he could not do it as Cancellara rode mercilessly on to a lone victory. We're watching here now as the tail end of the leaders now enter, chasers rather, enter 700 metre stretch. Well, the Garmin Savello rider who's got into that group there to uh, give a little bit of help to Tor Hushov is Sepp Van Mark, and he's been very good at the front of the race so far. Bear in mind, Garmin Savello have also got two very strong riders in the leading group of 18 in uh, the new young rider, Gabriel Rash, and of course, the big strong rider, Johan Van Summeren. Well, I've got a feeling that the peloton might be slowly uh, putting themselves back in the picture here. This is the chase group. At a minute 05 now, there is Cancellara in second wheel, third wheel. It's being driven on uh, by Hushoft in third place. Balan is up here as well. And these seven riders, I think there might be eight riders there just now. Yeah, they've just picked up somebody, I think, who got dropped from the leading group of riders and uh, just sitting on the back there, the Omega Farmer Lotta rider. I think that's uh, David Boucher, but he's slipping backwards. Well, there's only 17 riders that left up front, according to the computer, but we've seen nobody actually fall back on our television screens. So they're going to strengthen the chase group, perhaps, because we're inside now. 25, 26 miles left to ride, 41 kilometres to go. It's a funny old distance, that, today, Phil, because it was the, uh, the marathon not only in Paris, but also in Rotterdam. That's right. Well, uh, those athletes have now finished, of course. These boys are in for a six and a half hour ride today as they cross this massive uh, stretch of northern cobblestone roads. And th there's not really getting themselves organized here, are they? Because this is splinting all the time. Nobody's actually getting it uh, together. This is the breakaway, and it's Stanley who's trying to sort them out. Well, the problem is, Phil, is the, the group is too big in numbers. At 17 riders, you start to get a number of passengers, and that really does not feel good from a, from a mental point of view when you're in a breakaway. And you know that there's a bunch of guys at the back of the group sitting on your wheel and getting themselves an easy ride. Well, John Deppenkolb is going to remember his first professional Paris-Roubaix today because he's in this breakaway. He's the new signing on the American HTC High Road team. And what a great find he is. He's already started to win races in his first year as a pro. Now, what's happened now? Because it looks as though they decided to turn off just for a moment at the front. I'm not surprised because they really have not slowed down. Uh, Jimmy Ongelvon here, he's been up and down from the breakaway but at the moment he's back he's had gear problems but he's recovered from them it seems the word has gone out I think I think Jimmy's one of the guys who's actually fallen back from the breakaway just now Andre oh. Greifel sat at the back he reached the leaders but he's now back here so he's been dropped by the leaders because he's in the hush off trace group well, I tell you, that uh, section of cobblestones, Phil, at mont saint -Pavel, it does not take any prisoners at all. It's a very nasty section of cobblestones, and it, uh, once again, has stamped its authority all over Paris-Roubaix here this afternoon. But now, it's a big chase for those riders at the back, because they need to bridge a one-minute, ten-second gap. A mere 70 seconds, as once again, Gorash Stangeli tries to tempt others to come out and join him. There is still no obvious winner of this year's Paris-Roubaix. Maybe Stanley is going well, isn't he? Well, I don't think he is, but, but you know, he's been away since uh, the first section of cobblestones at Troisville. He has, yes, built up a bit of an advantage, but uh, he's not a man who's got the caliber of engine inside that body of his as a Fabian Cancellara or a Tor Hushoff, and why not a Juan Antonio Fletcher this afternoon, who's got a number of teammates from Team Sky alongside him to help. Just looking down at the remnants of the breakaway, which we think is down to 17 riders as we now enter Pave section number nine, or number eight rather. This is sector eight now, Pont Thibault, and another nasty section, although it's only given three stars, but it's quite a long stretch of 1400 meters. 17 leaders, Stangley back in the group, Hushoff in the chase. Yeah, that's point eight of a mile. Hushoff, how calm is he looking this afternoon? He knows he's got a number of teammates still alongside and dedicated to his possible success 
possibly going one better than he did last year when he finished in second place and he needs to remain calm Cancellara on the other hand does not have too many teammates at all in this group but he's sitting there waiting he knows he's still got a couple more possibilities to get off the front end of the pack and especially for example at the Pave de Labra which comes at four sections of cobblestones to go 2.1 kilometers long 1.3 miles let's take a look at the very serious uh, committed face there in second place of Fabian Cancellara trying to close down that gap the Astana rider is their top rider has made the split there Thomas Vaitkus as well so all the hard work by Astana seen that big man get into that Cancellara group these are the leaders here and I've just counted them and we've got 17 leaders left of the 21 that it was developing to Greipel has been dropped back into the Cancellara group at the moment and they are now on sector eight as well they've gone in a minute 20 down yeah well this is the part of the the race when they've got to just think about pulling it all back together now you can see Cancellara going again wants oh. to ride the cobbles in first position but you don't catch out to Husha quite that quickly he's got himself about a meter gap and he's going to try again to prize an advantage this is how he does it he gives a hundred and ten percent at this moment he wants to destroy those chasers and find only the strong ones to go with him Hushoff's up for the match because the man from Garmin Cervello has gone straight on his back wheel he was ready for the move well they've got that gap already he knows he's got to hit these guys as hard as possible but he's got to ride himself across a gap of a minute and 20 seconds but he's done the damage he's actually started to cant that group of riders now to allow only the top men to come to the front so Fabian Cancellara is doing what he does best and that's attack the cobblestones of Paris Bay. Tor Hushoff was marking Cancellara he was ready for the move there is signs of a recovery at least by a couple of the men behind but Cancellara has got himself <laughs> so Cancellara will be looking to try and go it alone sometime between now and the next 15 kilometers the crowd here enjoying the moment it looks like Alessandro Balan is in trouble here he's uh, lost contact on sector 8 unless he's trying to cross the gap and I'm not too sure it looks like he might be yes he is he's trying to reach them so Balan has gone from the group and trying to reach Hushoff and Cancellara <laughs> not running to the normal pattern as indeed was the case last week with the Tour de Flanders and that was an excellent race the gap has come down to 50 seconds so he's pulled back at nearly half a minute and he's gone this time and just when Hushoff had taken to the sidewalk he's back well so is Alessandro Balan team BMC just watch this again he's calm and collected jumped up the pavement there you've got to be alert all the time in Paris Bay waiting for anything to happen around a corner but Hushoff safely back onto the smooth tar in the middle of the road now we've got a three-man chasing group and yes Phil in about two kilometers they wiped off 20 seconds of that leading group's advantage what a brilliant piece of cycling what a great cycle racer uh, Fabian Cancellara is he wants to win this race and he's prepared to do it all my own work Hushoft is waiting till this guy cools down a little bit before he starts to help him these are the leaders and these are the chases behind Cancellara sorry now can they recover in time it's now down to 40 seconds. He's really plowing into this, but the man caught out is the team Skyrider, Juan Antonio Fletcher. 
Fletcher, the team who are expecting to have a two-pronged attack here this afternoon. Fletcher and Geraint Thomas, the Welsh rider on Team Sky, but he, unfortunately, like many other riders, has been dogged by bad luck here this afternoon. Well, they're only just up the road. It's still closable. They're on a good stretch of road for the moment. The next uh, stretch of cobblestones is only a short stretch of a couple of hundred metres, and that's at Tom Pleuve. But as we look here at the legs of number 24, Matthew Heyman, he is now in the third group on the road. Cancellara, it's a case of will he or won't he with 36 kilometres to go. There's Martin Elmiger. This is the front running group here. Totally unaware of what an incredibly good race is going on behind them as riders come and literally disappear in that chase. So well, that's uh, Martin Jangalai in the orange jersey. He's been a big animator of this early breakaway here, which has swelled to uh, incredible numbers. There are 16 survivors of that group, which built itself up to around about 21 men at one stage of the game. But now they all will know, the team managers will have told them they're being chased by a, drena a dramatic <laughs> trio of riders. What a quality trio of riders they are too. Bolano, former world champion, the current world champion, and the man who holds the record of world championships at the time trial, Fabian Cancellara, which he's won four times. There's the remnants of the group they left. They seem to have reformed into a chase of six. No, they will do everything they can, and Juan Antonio Fletcher will be kicking himself that he missed that move there because it's shown himself so far that he's been extremely strong in Paiuri Bay, but now he won't have too many friends in this group either because they all know he wants to pull himself back to the three men just off the front, and the gap now another 10 seconds shaved off it to 30. The hand was up there by Sepp Van Mark, who's done so much for Fletcher to keep him in a win situation and now seems to have a problem with his own. These are the three chasers. The gap is now a scant 30 seconds, and it's all down to that magical man on the front, Cancellara. Well, forget that, Phil. I think it's less than that because they started to pull the cars out behind these riders. The race referees keeping the gap nice and clean because they know <laughs> that Cancellara will come across. Can you imagine if these riders are told on their little ear radios, there's three guys catching up, Fabian Cancellara, Tor Hushoff, and Alessandro Bilan. I'd try to go quicker. Well, I think that's what Frédéric Guedon has decided here, the man from uh, Francaise de Jure in the white jersey, former winner of this bike race, <laughs> one of the oldest men in the bike race as well, Phil, at 38 years of age. But he knows you have to take advantage every time that you can. He's covered there by Johan van Sommeren, who rides for Garmin Cervelo. Yes, uh, Guedon won Paris-Roubaix back in 1997. And since then, he won Paris Tour, another classic race at the other end of the season in October. But good for him because this man certainly has done what his team manager Mark Maggio said he would do and that's put himself in front of the television cameras today in this breakaway. Well, two small sections are bolted together when the riders come out of this small town of Tompleuve. There's only 0.2 and 0.5 of a kilometre. But once that uh, through there, they'll be lining themselves up for the town of Cizouin. And there's two very nasty sections there which could again see a change in the face of this year's Paris-Roubaix. It may be on sector seven that Cancellara will try and reduce this down to bringing the breakaway back into the fold. They're going to go in at around 25 seconds, the gap here. And as Paula said, it's not very long, uh, bolted together. It's just three quarters of a kilometre, just over half a mile of cobblestones. We're on it. This is sector seven now, the first section. Tom Pleuve to Lapinette. It's only 200 metres, a slight respite. Then we get half a kilometre, just under a mile of cobbles after that. Half a mile of cobbles, rather. So that's the total of the cobblestones in this sector. And Cancellara and the two riders with him, Hushoff and Balan, are going to go in less than half a minute behind the leaders. They will use those two little sections of cobblestones to try and uh, they are, close right down there. the final gap. And Cancellara not asking for any help at all. You want to see how fast this man goes over the cobblestones. But now in the back of his mind, he's trying to work out the permutations. And his permutations will probably tell him that the next big move will probably come on Compagne en Fervel or the Carrefour de l'Arbre. Cancellara drives on now, he never looks around for help, he doesn't want any help, although he's carrying two men who could well beat him at the end if he gets to the track with them still on his wheel. But at the moment, he's only concerned about bringing back those 17 front runners. He's gone in at 25 seconds. Let's see what it is when he comes out. <laughs> Fifty-three 
three seconds to the group that Cancellara left, don't forget, when he attacked with Hushoff and was then caught by only Alessandro Balan. Well, there you can see that's the group of three there. You can just see the, the yellow motorbike there. That's the neutral service motorbike, which will give a wheel to any of the riders in that group of three if they were to have a mechanical incident. Now, the cameraman right up behind him. That's the view from being in the working line, sitting behind an express train here. The world champion living up to that rainbow jersey he wears. He won it in Geelong in a magnificent world championships in October last year. And Tor Hushoff today would love to become the first Norwegian ever to win this event. Well, he's got a very good chance at the moment because uh, once they catch that leading group, I'm sure we'll see a serious decanting of the number of riders in that group, especially over the next couple of sections of cobblestones, which again are going to be long ones and ones that have got a false flat in. And if you've got the power and you've got the ability to turn your pedals as fast as Fabian Cancellara can do, you will open up the gaps. Well, I have to say that ever since he attacked, Cancellara has asked for no help here. Balan made a huge effort to reach them, and he's done nothing but stay in the position we call the ticket collector at the back, uh, watching them do everything. They, that's the pressure they put on the man that's advertised his ability so well over the last two years. Well, Cancellara, he knows that uh, he's got to get himself across the gap and re rejoin that leading group of riders. And I would say then, Phil, what he will do is uh, take some respite for a couple of kilometres or so and wait for the next couple of big sections to try and make his move again because he knows he cannot drag Tor Hushoff to the finish. Otherwise, the Norwegian will win Paris-Roubaix. Yes, he's a terrific finisher. He's a big sprinter here. As we just uh, look at the riders here, number 36 there is Bernard Eisel also riding a strong race but that's the first time we've actually seen him 25 seconds the clock hasn't moved an inch uh, on that so 31 kilometers we are now just inside 20 miles from the finish of the 109th edition of Paris-Roubaix and uh, this time last year we knew the result because <laughs> Cancellara was just going like a train but today He's having to fight into the race rather than ride away with it. Bit of a move there, just coming from the sky rider, Matty Heyman. He thought he might just uh, prize a gap over the front end of this group. And now watch out, there's going to be lots of there's attacks now. Here comes one. And one of them's coming from Martin Elminger, who all of a sudden he's seen the move coming on his left-hand side. In fact, you don't usually see a move like that, Phil. You actually hear it and sense it. Well, I think he did just that because uh, these boys are getting very anxious now. In fact, they pulled 10 seconds away from the Cancellara group. So the other two riders better start thinking of helping Fabian Cancellara. He may be just uh, running out a little bit of steam. And in fact, that's exactly what's happened. He's pulled off the front. And so Cancellara, now, is he beginning to falter? Are we seeing what uh, is an early morning breakaway established to 17 riders? going to spoil the show for Cancellara, Hushoff and Balan. Well, they certainly have slowed down a fraction. You can see all the uh, press motorbikes around. They're all waiting for the next big moment of the day. The gap is 35 seconds. It's actually stretching out. Uh -oh. And uh, Cancellara is uh, talking to these guys. You guys have better work with me because I'm not going to drag you to the finish. And this is a, a very strange, a tactical situation. They know how strong Cancellara is. They really should get word from the team managers to all work together. Well, Fabian Cancellara is talking to the right, saying, guys, you either help me or we just wait for everybody else. Please yourselves. And it looks like they're going to wait. Oh, Cancellara, he's not going to have these guys sitting on him. And uh, I would say if I was Torhushoff, I'd put a couple of turns in to try and pull, a, pull the riders across to that leading group. Well, this is uh, when you're at the height of your game and Cancellara has certainly advertised his great form. Last week he was an angry man, he was outmaneuvered in the end. Nick Noyens was the rider who stole the show, and Cancellara had to be content with third in the Tour de Flanders. Uh, today, uh, according to the way he's been interpreted in print, and he says interpretations often go a bit awry, he was threatening to destroy the field. And he's tried, uh, but they've marked him out of it. And we're seeing a situation where 17 riders, which include, as far as we know, still up there Baden Cook, uh, is in that breakaway and it's gone out now to 40 seconds again so as they now the discussion starts here will that breakaway stay away and that's a question these riders must now be asking themselves with 19 miles to go well, I find this a little bit strange in the sport of professional cycling. You uh, don't sit on the back wheel of a man like Fabian Cancellara. Cancellara, I think, uh, a bit frustrated this last week. We've known how, how strong he's been 
interesting as well that the uh, rider, the man in the team car for Garmin Cervelo is Peter van Petergem, a man who in the past has won Paris-Roubaix and won the Tour of Flanders, and he could very easily be calling the shots. And it looked to me as if, in fact, Tor Hushoff was a little bit frustrated. We're just looking here now, a regrouping, a rethinking, and a little bit of a move coming from the back of the group here. This is when they've all started to ask for water, and Cancelor explaining to the manager, I'm not going to help these guys, it's up to them to help me now. There's nobody working. And so a moment of discontent here for Fabian. And they're back with the group that they were with just a few moments ago, and you're going to see a very frustrated, I would think, Fabian Cancellara in a little while. So inside 30 kilometers to go now, and a little regrouping at the back. Uh, all the others who are left behind are back in play, at least alongside Cancellara, Hushoff, and Balan. The moment of discontent, I think we'll call that, because the gap has gone out also to around about a minute again, is what our computer is saying. But now they're finding the rhythm once more. And look at this here, Paul, because this is the new boy on the block here for Garmin Cervelo, uh, Sepp van Mark, who's actually setting the pace again. Well, he's going to have to set the pace if Tor Hushoff thinks he's going to win this. Uh, I think what just happened there a few moments ago was Fabian Cancellara said, I'm not dragging you to a victory this afternoon. If you want to win, Harry Roubaix, you have to do a little bit of work. Well, we can't blame him because they really did sit on him and make him use all his energy. Now he's going to plot another attack, obviously, and next time he'll want to go by himself. And uh, now let's see what's still to come. Let's see what he might make. Him. I would suspect it's going to have to be around sector six now, Paul, at Seaswang. Well, actually, he might wait a little bit. Depends how his legs are feeling here this afternoon because the sections at five and four are very difficult sections from Confort yeah. Favela and, of course, the Pave de l'Arbre. They've both got slight inclines in them. And if Cancellara has got the legs, and I think he's already showed us that he's got the legs here this afternoon, he could use those sections to prize an advantage. But first of all, he has a slight problem, and that's 14 riders in front of him. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, those two sections, Paul has mentioned, are four kilometres in length. That's two and a half miles and that is the last chance. But when they keep going slow, the breakaway is moving steadily but surely. They're pulling out the time again. Yes, but look at the way the breakaway now is starting to operate. They're uh, attacking and slowing down, attacking and slowing down. And what that will do is it will actually slow down the average speed in this leading group of 14 riders. So theoretically, the group behind containing Cancellara should just by the natural progression start to come back. I make it only 14 riders there, so I'm wondering if we've uh, lost anybody. 28 kilometers to go now. It's been developing now into a lead bunch and a chase bunch, and all the favorites are in the chase bunch. 28 kilometers to go. There has to be concern on this breakaway now. Early on, they were never chasing this breakaway. It was an in-house fight, but now the breakaway is beginning to look rather dangerous. Yeah, Martin Jangalai here seeing uh, the possibility of uh, prizing a lead off the front end of the main field. A flick of the wrist you might have noticed there was to tell Johan van Sommeren, come on, let's work together, but you haven't got a gap, guys. And what you're doing here is you're destroying the momentum of the breakaway, and you will see your average speed start to diminish. I know it's getting late in Australia, but let's not forget that Baden Cook is in this front group as well. We haven't seen too much of him but he's very definitely still here as we move on to the next sector of Pave, the first part of sector six. Yeah, Baden Cook is riding a very clever race. He's allowing all these other guys to mess about. Sector six, first part now. This is just 1.3 kilometers long at Seaswang. There's got to be another reaction from the chase group as well. Our computer is saying that the gap has gone out to a minute 20, uh, but we're not showing you this on television for some reason. If that's true, there's a lot of work to be done from this chase group now. Well, Johan van Sommeren, uh, the big man who we see do a lot of work for teams that he's uh, been in inducted into over the past, whether it's in the mountains or whether it's in races like Paris-Roubaix, is uh, kicking out the pace at the front of this race. Now, he will be wondering, what am I going to do? Because in the group behind, he's got his own team leader, Tor Hushoft, who's got a very young Belgian rider alongside him, with Sepp van Mark, to do the pacemaking. But uh, that's why I think uh, Martin Elmiger here in the red has decided he has to hot up the pace. They cannot start messing around. Otherwise, they're going to lose their advantage. Oh, I tell you, Elwing is, 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 must be seen as a real danger now. Uh, this is a rider who can do anything. He can win stage races like the Santos Tour Down Under, and he can win one-day races like the Swiss Road Race Championship. He has got to be seen as a real threat now. 
15 riders are left in the breakaway slowly but surely we're dropping them off nine are in the chase group containing Cancellara and there is the white jersey of the world champion Tor Hushoft Hushoft at the moment has only marked Cancellara he hasn't contributed a lot to the pace and I'm sure Cancellara has noted that well the man sitting on the Cancellara's wheel there in third place is Juan Antonio oh. Fletcher how dramatic is that well that would make a nice jigsaw puzzle wouldn't it as we look down there in the dust and it's the dust which goes into the eyes of the riders it causes conjunctivitis it is the most unpleasant experience believe me and these boys are now having to contemplate defeat to 15 riders opportunists up front including the australian baden cock it's a minute 10 the gap well, Matty Heyman is in this group now, and he must be nurturing thoughts of a possible surprise victory for Team Sky, and he has the ability to uh, do very special things. He won himself a, a gold medal in the Commonwealth Games uh, a number of years ago, but he's uh, turned himself over the last couple of years in a, into the position of being a super domestique at 25 kilometres to go. Well, the sign says, Arrive, 25 kilometres. That's just over 15 miles. That's all that's left to race of the 109th Paris-Roubaix. Still no decision, and still we've been back to 20 seconds don't forget with that breakaway and we're now out again to a minute 10. Yep, this is a long hard section of cobbles and it's a big battle there's Hushoft over on the right hand side in that white jersey indicating he's a champion of the world with the rainbow bands around his middle. Fletcher is being very attentive too now but these guys they really need to uh, I think work together to consolidate and chase down that leading group of 15 riders if they want to think about winning Paris-Roubaix here this afternoon because otherwise we could get a surprise in the shape of Baden Cook. There, well Baden can pack the sprint finish if it gets down to that situation and he will, won't be uh, at all worried about riding on the bank straights of the velodrome here as the Giants gaze on over an incredible race today it has become a pursuit a breakaway and what's left of the peloton and they're separated by just uh, about 800 meters one minute ten on these roads isn't it eight nope. to nine hundred meters yep that's about it now this is uh, the group behind now les poursuivants the chasers uh, Cancellara having to play a bit of a defensive role now he'll be uh, calculating in his mind what's the best situation for him he knows he really wants to win this race on his own if he can he wants to win it for the second year in succession but he's going to have to play a waiting game and hit them very hard one more time that lone cyclist there was a coup de court he was in the lead group he's now slipping away from it he's a teammate of mitchell docker so we've still got gregory rash up front johan van summeren lars black her deccan cold is there uh, rolance is there Kinziato, Elminger, Lars Boom, those are the riders up there, Tom Lisa made it, uh, and this is uh, the composition, I think Mitchell Docker is one of the riders who, I didn't see him drop, but I'm sorry uh, to tell the Australians, he has been dropped from that league group. Well, this is the second part uh, of uh, section number six to go at uh, Borgel to Wana. It's just uh, a three-star rating of 1.1 kilometres in length, and that uh, corresponds to around about 0.7 of a mile as they bounce their way towards Roubaix where at least the concrete track will be a bit smoother for the big sprint if that's what it's going to be I can't imagine a group this big will arrive on the velodrome that will call for another type of skill because many of these road riders aren't used to racing on the velodromes around the world minute five they're bringing it back yet again well this is still the leading group that's big Johan van Sommeren over there on the left hand side a big strong bike rider he uh, is very much appreciated in any team that he's been involved with I remember him doing so much work for Robbie McEwen when they were together at the Lotto squad well, that looks like Lars Back who's setting the pace there for HTC High Road and also Deccan Kolb is still up here in this group in his very first Pairu Bay as a pro a chance here to look across the fields and uh, the reason I'm looking across the fields at the moment is to try and ascertain the gap between uh, this leading group of riders and the front end of the chase behind and it's still pretty much being controlled by Garmin Cervello they really had a plan this afternoon and that was only to work for one man on the squad despite the fact they had three possibilities of a win with Heinrich Hausler, Tyler, Tyler Farrar and of course Tor Hushoff but I think it is all going to be put onto the shoulders of Hushoff sitting there in second place they're waiting for a move nobody is making a move here now they're just continuing uh, to follow wheels which is not the nature of the game if they're going to close this gap down they're waiting for fabulous fabian to make his move and i'm not sure now when you start sitting up and arguing with the rider sitting behind you it's also a sign that you're feeling the pace as well 
Well, that's off that section of cobblestones. Uh, the next one will be Confin en Pavel. That's a good place to make a move at 1.8 kilometers long. There's also a very nasty incline there too. The leaders are running out of road, or maybe I should say the chasers are running out of the chance of catching the leaders. The race is heading towards the last big moments of this year's Paris-Roubaix, and the gap is 65 seconds, or to put it another way, just over half a mile. There's the fans down there. I can't understand what they're saying because it's all in different colours. A minute is the gap now. They've knocked another five seconds off. It looks as though this breakaway now is getting itself organised again. And again, it is this amazing man here, uh, Sepp, uh, what's his name, Van, uh, Sepp Van Mark, who is actually doing all the work. He's doing all the work for the man sitting right behind him, Tor Hushoff, the champion of the world, who is dreaming of going one better than second place in Paris-Roubaix last year. And uh, to do that, he's going to have to use his team to bridge that gap. They're starting to turn the tables a fraction. I think that, Phil, is because in the leading breakaway of 14 riders, there is a little bit of uh, dissension in the ranks. And obviously, a lot of riders starting to tire after being away at the front of this race for around about 140 kilometers. Yeah, they must be feeling tired now because the next section of cobblestones at Sea Swang is the 230 kilometer point of the race and I think they must be feeling tired now this looks like a move by Degen Cold here trying to get away off the front if it's not then it's his teammate uh, Lars Back who's stretching them heading into Campan for Belts Lars Back who's made the move this time for HTC High Road who are having we, we should say the usual start to the year they're winning lots of bike races both with their men's and their women's team this is the number one team for my money on the road at the moment, HTC High Road. Well, they had a big win in the middle of the week, of course, in the, the Grote Prize, Skelda Prize, and that, yeah. of course, was at Mark Cavendish winning a, a head of an unbelievable crash in the last three or 400 metres, but that didn't affect Mark Cavendish, who came out to win that bike race for the third year in succession. Yes, yeah, big memory for Mark, because that was the very first bike race he won as a professional as well, uh, about four years, four or five years ago. But Mark is in this race for the first time, and apart from being in trouble at the back, we haven't seen anything of him. He's got two teammates up here, though. He'll be cheering for if he's not uh, in the television room somewhere right now, because he may not be riding right now. 45 seconds, desperate moments require desperate min minutes, because they've got to push on. That group is coming back. And again, this is Lars Back of HTC trying to uh, get himself an advantage. He was covered very quickly by Johan van Sommeren. Van Sommeren has been extremely attentive here this afternoon as Gregory Rast of Team Radio Shack comes across the gap. Yes, now this might be the splitting up of the lead group at 21 kilometres to go. 45 seconds is the gap. The breakaway is in disarray now. It's uh, what strength you've got. It's now time to lay it on the road. Yeah, we'll uh, just look at the gap as well because that chasing group containing Cancellara and world champion Tor Hushoff is down to 45 seconds and that's really because of the fact that uh, there's a lack of organisation now in the breakaway group. And I apologise because there is Mitchell Docker sat at the back of this front group so well done to Docker. He's had an incredible day out in front from about 80 kilometres in today. That's a long day in the saddle in the lead in Paris-Roubaix. Well, you can see now, by the way, these riders are, are going at it, Phil. They are all extremely tired. It's a question of now who's got that last little bit of energy to get themselves into the breakaway split. And watch out for Gregory Rast, the big rider there from Team Radio Shack. Uh, he's a Swiss rider, formerly the Swiss national champion, and he is a big power horse for this kind of event. Absolutely, as uh, we could see from the trees, uh, spring has well and truly sprung now for what is uh, the biggest of the spring classics, Paddy Roubaix. We're back to the chasers now. It is still Van Mark here doing the pacemaking for his team captain, the world champion, Tor Hushoff. Noticeably, Cancellara has dropped away from the front. He's planning something. But also, noticeably for Cancellara, Phil, he doesn't have any teammates in this group, and that is going to be a bit of a problem for him a little bit later on because uh, he's going to have to do everything on his own, and if he should have any bit of bad luck from now on towards the finish, it'll be tough for him to pull himself back into the race. Well, you know, this breakaway still has got to feel confident he can go the distance today uh, because these boys, I think, are just about on the limit now. Alessandro Balan is there, third in line. They're coming up to the 20-kilometre marker, just 12 miles from the finish. Only one, well, we'll call it two, uh, serious sections, the Camp en Pavel and the Carrefour de Lab, uh, and then we'll go down towards the finish through M and Roubaix. Here we are. 
This is sector five, Campfin en Pavel. Four stars, but a vicious part of the race now. 1,800 meters, that is all. Just over one and a half miles. 19.9 kilometers, or just 12 miles from the finish. And the leaders are losing ground again. This will be a crucial moment for them. This is a very nasty section of cobbles as well, because uh, once you get around this corner, it starts to climb up slightly. The incline, after being in the saddle uh, for almost uh, five and a half hours, of racing now will start to pay and you can see these three have stolen a very interesting advantage over the front end of the rest of the guys who were with them it's Lars back followed by Gregory Rast of Radio Shack and just on the back there big old Johan van Sommer and happy for the ride very important move it was Lars back who pulled away uh, on the good road because he felt they were losing the impetus in the breakaway and he was right and he was quickly joined by Rast and then van Sommer so they're slightly ahead of the remnants of that breakaway here comes the uh, next group on the road now, just behind the leaders. They still could get back up to those leaders, but this is a crucial moment. I want to remember Sean Kelly breaking his forks on this section of the road. Well, this is uh, Lars Boom on the front and uh, looking over to see if he's going to get any help there from Tor Hushoff. Hushoff now having to do the pacemaking himself and realizing time might be running out to eat into that 45 second advantage. Well, there's the mist. It looks like a forest fire here, but it isn't. It is just the dust in the air being whipped up by the cars, by the motorbikes, by the helicopter. And indeed, there is a, a more than a breeze blowing across the race now, but they're never in the same direction for very long, so they'll get it from all sides. Hushoft being tailed by Fabian Cancellara, the men who finished first and second last year, now put onto the defensive by an opportunist group of escapers who could reshape this race. Well, back to the Tete de la Course, and that is uh, Gregory Rast. That's Johan van Sommeren in the black and white jersey, uh, just on the far side. And coming up, uh, there, this is all uh, turning itself inside out here at the moment, because all of a sudden, there's a Rabobank rider come across that gap there, and that could only be Lars Boom. Lars Boom, I think it must be Lars Boom who's crossed the gap, and as I said, he just uh, this is the course for him. He's a cyclocross rider, the flag of Flanders is blowing across there. Uh, but the Belgians, uh, Johan van Summen, is being left to him to fly the flag. And we wouldn't have mentioned that. It's Jangeli, in fact, they're saying, his teammate who has ridden a wonderful race. He's been in this breakaway almost since inception today. So he's been out in front since the 80th kilometre or the 50th mile. Well, that's an impressive move by him. His teammate Lars Boom is in the group behind and uh, he will now be on the defensive waiting to see who is going to chase down his teammate. This is a tough section of cobbles. That's the remnants of the group. Yes, being led as always by the champion of Switzerland, Martin Elminger. And this uh, is Mitchell Docker here, who's hanging on to this chasing group. And with only 18 kilometers to go, Mitchell can get a big result in Paris Roubaix. Well, you can see the shoulders of these riders. Uh, now, look at VR there in the green jersey of Europe car. His shoulders now starting to sag a fraction. That's an indication that we're getting to the difficult part of this race when, when the body starts to ask you to stop giving it all of this punishment. Well, they're off that section, but it's not long before they're on the other bit of it here, which is 1.1 uh, kilometers long. But no big reaction there uh, from the group containing uh, Cancellara and Hushoft. I'm beginning to think this year they may have missed the train. Well, the gaps are opening up. 25 seconds, these four riders have now stretched their advantage. So with 55 seconds uh, just for the leaders of today's section of Paris-Roubaix, the big question is, will they get themselves back into this picture? Or will Lars Back, Gregory Rast, Johan van Summen or Martin Jangeli be the surprise winners today? That's 17.8 kilometres to go. Well, everybody now are starting to get a, a fraction nervous, I would hazard a guess, Phil. This is the third group on the road. Four leaders, the four leaders, uh, Johan van Sommeren, Lars Back, Martin Jangelay, and Gregory Rast. And it's Gregory Rast, the big man from Switzerland, who's currently on the front. Yes, and this would be the biggest result of Gregory's life because he's a man that's a workhorse now. We are entering now sector four, just four sectors to go. This is the Carrefour de Lard, five stars over 2,000 metres, Paul, and they've got the advantage by 25 seconds over the rest of the breakaway. This is a long section, a 1.3 mile. Ugh. Don't be shy, I'll let it all out next time. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, geez, it's going to start again. Pictures, so, then. A fast five-star rating, Phil, because it's a very difficult section of cobblestones. Maybe even worse in the dry than in the wet, because these are what the riders here know as the blue stones. They are very shiny and very slippery, and I've seen many riders go down on this section. Not that we wish that today, because these boys really have taken the race to the favourites today. Uh, they've tried to reach them, so far they've failed. This is the favourites group now, containing Fletcher, dead centre of our picture. Also is Tor Hushot, Fabian Cancellara, the riders who cleaned up one year ago. This is an amazing result so far, and it's going in favour of the adventurers of Paris-Roubaix. Well, Juan Antonio Fletcher has come to the front now, Phil, 14 Sky. He knows this section of cobblestones, and he knows you've got to put it on the line here if you want to win Paris-Roubaix. 25 seconds is the difference between the four leaders and the second group on the road, but we're looking at the third group on the road who are here looking for a 50-second gap to pull, to pull it back. Desperate, desperate. Yeah, the and they can't do anything about it. We can wind the clock back two hours, the gap was the same. It's been locked in like this all of the time, and this four-man leading group now looking a little bit strange, names that we wouldn't normally be talking about in this, age, this era of Paris-Roubaix. Van Sommer... <laughs> in his career really and that was the Tour of Poland and the stage in the Tour of Poland and uh, one very very small race in the Belgian town of Lommel nothing approaching a win in Paris-Roubaix well I tell you what he's got the gap right now Phil on one of the most difficult sections of Paris-Roubaix and that's the Carrefour de l'Arbre he's not taking any prisoners at all and this is the kind of guy that over the years we've watched so many times doing the pacemaking on the front in the mountains or on the big flat races like Paris-Roubaix but usually for other people, and he's about to get joined. Well, Van Summen has ridden six Tours de France, always in the service of someone else. He's won three races in a career which started back in 2003, but he is an incredibly popular rider, and he's not waiting for anyone. He's... <laughs> His chance of winning Barry Roubaix start to disappear. And up comes uh, Fabian Cancellara. Can look straight in his eyes, Hushoff. So Hushoff started it this time. Cancellara is trying to finish it off. And this here now is Juan Antonio Fletcher. And, think... and he is in trouble. Or oh, has he gone for? Did I miss his attack? I think... Because that's a Fletcher. Well, he's in front of Cancellara. Not well, too sure where he's. We've caught up with our motorbike, which won't be welcome at all. That was ten. Oh dear me! We've every oh, everybody's got in a little bit of a mess there. That should not have happened. I know it's uh, it's impossible to avoid on these narrow roads, but that may have taken the steam out of the counter attack. Well, I'd hazard a guess that in fact that uh, Juan Antonio Fletcher was actually getting himself across the gap there. That's now Balan on the front of that group, and again. The <laughs> And it may well 
have destroyed for the moment the impetus of that move but here we go again 40 seconds is the gap 15 kilometers to go just over nine miles uh, to the finish now I tell you, uh, Fabian Cancellara is not looking that uh, good at the moment. You can see the top half of his body rocking around a fraction. He's going to have to do something very special if he wants to win Paris-Roubaix here this afternoon. So five riders now are coming across the gap. And only three sectors of Parve left, and none of them extremely difficult. So they've got to really work on it now, because this man here, Johan van Summeren, is trying to do what Fabian Cancellara did with such souplesse last Stop year. Here, that was right right away go. with... <laughs> again is dictating the race to Tor Hushoff, who will not let him go. But now Tor Hushoff is in a very strong position. He's got a teammate off the front, uh, the Garmin Chevello rider Johan van Sommeren. So for, for Tor Hushoff, he's on the defensive. He's going to sit on the wheel of Fabian Cancellara and allow the Swiss rider to do all of the work in pursuit of his own teammate here, the Belgian van Sommeren, who comes off this uh, three sections of go to Gobblestones and safely two. 13 kilometers to go it was all solitary splendor for Cancellara this time 12 months ago it was all a matter of just getting to the velodrome it's not the case now for Johan van Sommeren because he is dangerously close to being caught but these are the greatest moments of van Sommeren's career let me just remind you Phil who is sitting in the team car of Garmin Cervelo here this afternoon Peter van Pietergem maybe this is the art uh, this is the master tactical maneuver for the American team well, he is the guiding light. Van Pietergen was one of the few men who could... Hey, Fletcher! shouting into the ear in his own language as well because Peter van Pietergem is Belgian 12.8 kilometers to go we're going to start trying to push him along I think at the moment now because everybody is after him well with seven miles to left seven and a half miles to go Johan van Sommeren has played his final card will it win the hand the sun is out on his back shoulder 
Well, the race situation now are completely turned upside down because Van Sommeren now leads by uh, about 10 seconds. Well, it's gone up to 24 seconds as we watch ahead of Lars Back and Gregory Rast. That, Phil, is a massive lead. Back and Rast. <laughs> and uh, comes through after 260 kilometers all but a few hundred meters to the Roubaix Velodrome the crowd is stunned silence here they're watching a big screen in the center and you could hear a pin drop as they watch a Belgian racing towards the stadium well there's only one last chance I would have to say Phil for uh, the man who's in that group the Fabian Cancellara if he wants to get himself a bit of a victory and that's going to be on the 1.4 kilometer section between Willems and Hem. Last moment I think for the battling Canadian here David Velo as he tries to just hold off the remnants of the breakaway but now we're trying to find the location of Cancellara. It's just to the front there of that group. There is Fletcher and there he is at the front there is Fletcher and having a little chat here too with Lars Bohm the world champion the talent in those four cyclists in our picture now enormous but they're being outwitted just now with 12 kilometers to go and Cancellara back under control he's been put back in his box well he's under control but everybody's just sitting pretty on his back wheel there and uh, riders you can see the guys from Team Sky they got Matty Heyman and Juan Antonio Fletcher in this group but knowing the pedigree of the work that this guy can do Phil Johan van Sommeren I'm not sure that anybody's going to pull him back here this afternoon well, the way he's riding now, he is on the moment of his life here, heading the Paris-Roubaix towards the finish, 12 kilometers out from home and still gaining time. 26 seconds the gap to the chasers, two riders, 48 kilometers behind him. Bit of argy-bargy going on there, Phil. And it's just dropped to 10.9 on our screen, so that we're catching up. And well, that's in the favour of Van Summer. And we're now down to just over six miles to the finish. Well, Cancellara said to me yesterday, Phil, when I interviewed him, that the most important thing to him was to ride this race in a royal fashion. And he's certainly done that. But he's found himself in the position of being the super pre-race favourite. And he ends up with having a bunch of uh, anchors attached to his back wheel. He's just not been able to get free as he did 12 months ago. And shouldn't be seen as an outstanding surprise. A surprise, yes, but not an outstanding surprise because he has finished fifth in Paris-Roubaix two years ago. And before that, his best finish was eighth. So he loves the cobblestones. Now he's got the chance to convert the lot into one big win. Well, it would be a magnificent win for him, and he's doing everything he can. He won't look over his shoulder at all now, as he knows he's got a big gap of 26 seconds. Now we're looking at the long gangly legs here of a man delivering the result, I think, for the Belgians. He's gone out to nearly half a minute, Johan van Sommeren. It took the moment when he thought Cancellara was going to cross the gap along with Hushoft and Balan and Fletcher. And he's gone. These are the two chasers, the many left. Gregory Ratz of Radio Shack in front, the Swiss rider. And up behind him here, we've just got one more rider, Lars Back of HTC High Road. Just thinking, Phil, uh, something that I forgot about completely the first three riders on the road well, those gaps we've been getting have not been quite right because there you can see just in front Johan van Sommer and it's 21 seconds the gap yeah the three teams that we're looking at here are all American registered teams that's the changing face of the world of cycling I think these are the top teams not of just of the year but the last couple of seasons as well uh, Garmin I think are the number one ranked team on results at the moment this year and right up there with them is HTC uh, High Road without a shadow of a doubt and of course our old favourite uh, uh, team there Rabobank also riding extreme level. you're right these teams are the best teams on the block at the moment and they're delivering somewhat with surprising riders we wouldn't have expect uh, Van Summeren, Back and Rast cleaning up these are what we usually call the helpers, the domestics 
9.2 kilometers to go as our cameras now search through the remnants of an exploded Paris Roubaix. Desperate moments. This is Jangeli here now as he continues, and we're still chasing down Johan van Sommeren. Yeah, Martin Jangeli from uh, Team Rabobank here sitting in second position on the road uh, back and Rast a little bit further back. I'd forgotten that he was actually with Johan van Sommeren, almost made the junction. So this is actually looking even better for Johan van Sommeren here this afternoon. He's got about a 15 second advantage over Jangele and another five to seven seconds further back is in fact the two chasers. We're on to Grusson. No, we're not. We're on to Willems Ahem now. I must miss Grusson completely in such an exciting finish now. It's only two stars, but it is 1400 kilometers mi long, not kilometers. As we're watching Van Summeren here now bounce his way could be bouncing his way to a most memorable day in the northern roads of France. Well, uh, he's got 1.4 kilometres of cobblestones here. They're actually very treacherous as well, these, because they've got a piece of tarmac at the side. And when riders switch from left to the right, I've seen tyres pop off in previous editions of Paris-Roubaix. It's about 0.8 of a mile as the second man in the road here has been in the breakaway for a long time. Look at that. The race is over about a one-minute difference. 15 seconds to Jangalai, 25 seconds to the two chasers, and 55 seconds to the group which contains some of the big pre-race favorites who I think this afternoon Phil have really made a mess of it they're paying the price of being such outstanding favorites they've been too heavily marked by one another and that's a perfect consomme to get the riders who don't expect to attack out in front Van Sommeren took his moments well here. It's, if he is to win, it's been a well-earned victory. He hasn't won yet by any manner of means because these boys are coming from a breakaway which was very difficult to understand. Firstly, eight riders go clear. Then they swell to 10. Then they went to 17. Then 21. Now the reverse is in the process. Just one left. Only one each Belgium if you've got long arms, and he's got long arms because it's only just behind us here at the French frontier. Six and a half kilometers to go. Jangli only once in his life has he ever finished in the top ten in a named classic race. He was seventh in the German classic Hen Henniger term quite a few years ago. Here he is, second on the road. Off their last section of cobblestones now in the town of Hem after 250 kilometers in the saddle for this man, Johan van Sommeren. And next, there's only one section to go for, but as you said, pretty much ceremonial. These are the moments. He's going to see the outskirts of Roubaix very, very shortly. In the last couple of kilometers, he rides down towards the velodrome. And Jangli knows exactly what he's got to do now, but surely he can't raise any more speed. Now, this man has ridden a great race. Well, it's uh, really it's mano a mano. 33 seconds. It's stretching out now for Johan van Sommeren in first place. And what a coup this is going to be, I think, for Garmin Cervelo. Yeah. They probably couldn't have planned this before the start of the day. Because you can't plan Paris-Roubaix. You have to react to the way the race evolves. Well, the American HTC High Road team uh, took out the big race in March, which was Milan San Remo with Matthew Goss, the Australian. Now it looks as though their arch rivals on the American circuit, Garmin Cervelo, are going to take out the Queen. And that is the biggest one day race of them all, Paris Roubaix. Johan van Summen is pulling away, and he's now further away than he was two hours ago. Well, you know, I've seen this man ride such fantastic pieces of work on the front end of the main field in the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France, and the Vuelta a España. And the incredible thing about Van Sommeren, Phil, is he can ride in the mountains and he can fly on the flat. And that's exactly what he's doing here this afternoon. He's looking now at a half a minute advantage. 5.3 kilometers to go. Well, we're witnesses a big pursuit today between the chase and the break, and now the breakaway may well have succeeded. In five kilometers, we're gonna know all of the answers. Look at the face here, Alessandro Balan flicking his arm, wanting Cancellara to come past him. He won't come past him. It's all too little, These too boys late. Are beaten. They are beaten. It's all too little, too late for the big favourites here this afternoon because the clock does not lie in a race like Paris-Roubaix and they are now a minute and ten seconds behind Johan van Sommeren. It's all over by the shouting for these guys and they'll be racing probably for fifth place once they come onto the velodrome. Seven riders in the group, but up the road ahead of them are four riders, so they're not even racing for a podium place right now. 54 seconds, five kilometers to go. I don't think it's possible. The only man in with a chance of spoiling the party for this rider, Van Summeren, is Jangeli himself, because he's the closest to him. 
Yeah, and that's 30 seconds, and that at this speed, Phil, corresponds to around about 500 metres or 500 yards, if you prefer it in old money. And he's not the kind of guy who's going to blow up uh, on the running towards the finish because this is a man who's got a serious engine. He's got the power, and he's been a big team helper for many, many years. He's looked after Robbie McEwen, he's looked after Cadell Evans, and in recent years he's been brought on board here, Garmin Cervello, to be a big tough man in the mountains. Well, if only we could see his face, our motorbike cameramen are not allowed to go in front to the rider for obvious reasons so but it is a mask of pain right now this rider is just living on the wing and the prayer now the all he wants is to see the Roubaix velodrome to hear the traditional roar of the crowd and he'll be welcomed home for the biggest day in his professional career yeah well he's looking here Phil at a last uh, incline of one kilometer to the top of the mountain of Hem because it probably feels like a mountain to him at the end of uh, 255 kilometers of riding this afternoon once he crests the top of this incline Phil it's pretty much downhill all the way to the velodrome 30 years of age just two months ago Johan van Sommeren surely did not come out today planning a victory no that was to go the way of his team leader the world champion Tor Hushoff instead he found himself in a move that they could not bring back now we can see his face and it just will him on because that's all you can do now well, second on the road at 32nd, uh, Jangale wants to know what the time gap is. Well, it's going away from him, 35 seconds. Yeah, he's gone. He's only 10 seconds in front of the two chasers, so there are going to be a group of three now chasing Johan van Sommeren. What a day it's going to be for the Belgian. 3.8 kilometres to go. The legs, I think, just cracked as far as Martin Jangale was concerned. But these legs are not going to crack, Phil, because this man has got the power under his belt right now. So we're looking at desperate moments in the chasers now as they all try to put wrong the right, to put right to wrongs, but at 3.6 kilometres to go, Johan van Sommeren is not going to be caught, and it looks as though Zhangli has cracked as well in second place. Cancellara goes again. He will not give up this man. He's racing at the moment for fifth place on Paris-Roubaix. Now he's going to try and do something about it. He's gone again. He's gone again, and he's going to hurt himself, and he's going to pedal now, Phil, not only with uh, courage but he's going to pedal with anger because he feels that everybody in this race has ridden behind him they've pulled themselves back to him every time and sat in his slipstream the man trying to chase him is Tor Hushov but I don't think Hushov has got the power to go well Cancelar is putting everything into this one now he's probably the only man in the world who could cross the gap to the leader because he is the master of the time trial four times the world champion the current Olympic and world champion and now these are very, very desperate moments. But last year's winner is not going to go out quietly. No, he won't. And hats off to them, but for not even putting down the sword and fighting right towards the very end. But one man is going to ride onto the velodrome in a very short period of time, and it's Johan van Sommeren. There is where he's headed to, Phil, the velodrome, which has hosted this finish for many, many years of one of the greatest classics on the calendar, the queen of the classics, Paris-Roubaix. And just about everybody who lives in those houses has moved into the centre of the velodrome now, but look at the speed of this man. He has already reached the premier chasers of the group, and Cancellara, at least, is racing himself onto the podium. Can he cross the gap and go the whole way? What a remarkable ride this is. Well, he said he wanted to ride and bring some love back into the sport, some romance back into the sport. Well, that's what this is all about. This is riding with a fire in your belly, despite the fact you've had a bunch of riders sitting on you all day. Cancellara has caught the three men in the middle. He's now looking already at a second-place finish. Lars Back has jumped onto the action. Zhangli, we never saw him caught has come back into this group there's only one man in front now and that is Johan van Sommer and there he is it's uh, no time for thinking Johan close your eyes and go that's all you can do now because the strongest time trialist in the world somehow has found his second pair of legs well the official time gap is 45 seconds and I'm not sure they're going to wipe they that out in two surely. kilometers but van Sommer has just got to keep looking forward don't even think about looking over your shoulder but he now knows he's walk writing his name into the history History books of professional cycling with a ride like this. Can you imagine the pain, the lactic acid in those legs now as he goes inside two kilometres to go? He's just over one mile from the finish. It sounds shorter that way. Then he's got a lap and three quarters of the velodrome to go. 40 seconds the gap. Well, we've seen some incredible. Yeah, we're heading to the finish yet. Yeah. 
En el velódromo de Roubaix, ese último tramo testimonial de esos 300 metros que aquí tiene Van Sumeren. Para finalizar estos 27 en los que ha constado esta París Roubaix, 258 kilómetros. Entrando en el Space Krupelang. ¿Y quién fue el señor Charles Krupelang? Pues un francés ganador dos veces de la París Roubaix en 1912 y en 1914. El triángulo rojo que cuelga de ese arco inflable, curva a la derecha, último kilómetro para Johan van Sumeren, el corredor belga del equipo Garmin Cervelo. Mira por dónde, nueva alegría para los belgas, pero les va a llegar de donde menos esperaban. Es. No les va a llegar de Quick Step Energetic, no les va a llegar de Omega Pharma Loto, les va a llegar de un trabajador que en buena lógica no estaba predestinado a la gloria, pero esto también... También ese podio de ese segundo y ese tercero. También son hombres, todos son importantes, todos los que participan. Pero esta grandeza, la gloria, se la va a llevar este señor, este belga, gran trabajador, sacrificado siempre para sus compañeros, que le ha abierto esa, esa oportunidad, la carrera, esa estrategia, ese bloqueo que han tenido los hombres importantes y ese esfuerzo con el que va a conseguir la victoria. El pasado 4 de febrero cumplía 30 años y hoy va a cumplir el sueño de todo gran ciclista. Johan van Sumeren, con tiempo para disfrutar. Últimos metros, mira para atrás, no viene nadie, casi no se lo puede... por Relax, por David Amón, por Predictor, por Garmin. Y esta es la pelea por la plata. Con Gregory Ras, con Martin Tialinghi, con Fabián Cancelara. ¿Para quién? La segunda plaza. ¡Oh! Igualadísima esa llegada entre Cancelara y Tialinghi. Yo creo que el destino va a caer de la mano del suizo. Vamos a ver. Pero... De foto finish esa llegada Qué por valiente. la segunda es, posición. Es espectacular lo que puede conseguir. Sí, señor. Este sí, señor. Solo un aplauso. Y, y ahí llega ese otro grupo. Balan. Pequeña ventaja para Balan. 40 segundos ya desde que entrara Johan van Sumeren. Y la pelea que va a ganar el campeón del mundo, Thor Hushoff. No, es... Uno de los de HTC. Y parte de esa escapada que indicabas, ¿eh? que ha llegado. Formada en el sector, en los primeros 100 kilómetros antes de empezar el sector de adoquín número 27. No ha llevado ninguna y esta es solo su tercera victoria como corredor profesional en nueve años. Aquí es igual, el polvillo de, de Rubén. In fact, that sprint I saw was uh, behind the field a little bit. But Balan also getting another good result in uh, Paris Roubaix, but not what he was out for today. He was on good form. Now, the big moment is he's escorted away. I hope he's got some strength left to pick up the cobblestone which goes to the winner. It weighs at 14.8 kilograms, which is about 31 pounds. For me, another hero of the day. Tremendous ride by Fabian Cancellara as he now cleans up just around the back of the presentation zone. He's on the podium with a second place to marry up with the two wins he's had in this event. And he certainly didn't let... But he's never known such adoration. He's never had so many cameras around him. Normally, he's receiving all the accolades from his teammates for helping them win. And he slides away to the showers and just gets on with his daily chores. But today he is the star of the show. And that's Eric Zabel, judging by the back of his head, who's congratulating him as well. Great German sprinter. Because they're all thinking like I am, and I'm sure you are who know your cycling, that this man is one of the domestics of the world of cycling who deserves his day. And today it came. Yeah, and with Team Garmin, we talked about Hushoft, talked about Farrar, talked about Heinrich Hausler. Not many people thought about you. 
it's maybe my uh, my luck that I that nobody was looking at me. Uh, they were all looking at Thor, and I could I could use uh, the rivalry between the really big riders, and they let me go. So uh, it's really a big dream for me. Was it a big help to have uh, another Belgian in the team car talking to uh, Peter van Pietergem, who knows all about these cold races? Yeah, he did a, an amazing job this uh, this spring season. He worked with us, and uh, but now the last 10 kilometers, I didn't hear anything. I was so suffering and pushing on the pedals and hoping that nobody could come back. I was giving it all and. Now here, I'm glad to see him. And, yeah. A little while ago in the Tour de France, you said to us that uh, a man who's won uh, Paris-Roubaix is the happiest man in the world. Is that the case tonight? I think you're gonna, if you come to my village tonight, you're going to see something. Eh? <laughs> and uh, we're, we're hearing on uh, Belgian radio that uh, maybe after the finish, you might just have uh, made a special announcement or a special uh, question to somebody. Yeah, I did. Well, would you like to tell us about the, the, the new engagement? Yeah, I asked my girlfriend to marry me, uh, just, <laughs> it was, uh, we are now six, seven years together and uh, I think this is, uh, this maybe it doesn't look romantic, but it's the most, <laughs> I think you can't do it on a more special way than this way. Okay, final question, when you went away on the Pave de Labra, the team manager said, if you're going away, Johan, you have to go alone. Yeah, but I felt I could, I could ride them all out of my wheel. Well done. Thank you.